What is up, Salt Nation? It's Thursday night, and we're back with the saltiest gaming podcast. Sorry about missing last week. I was sick. As you guys could probably hear in my last video, people were saying I sounded constipated. Uh, not sure how that really sounds, I guess, uh, but I'm glad you guys could all be here tonight. We have some great topics to go over as usual. Got some great guests as well. Um, as far as what have I been up to, man, I've been playing all kinds of games in the PlayStation Plus uh, Premium I have the game. One of the games that I've been playing is Shadow Warrior 3. It's playing in the background here. I was talking to Karaba in the pregame, and I, there's something about this game. I played the first two. Uh, it, this it, The game's really fun, don't get me wrong, but it, there's something that's kind of off with it. Uh, I don't know if it's kind of like them copying Doom too much with like pull like punching your hand through eyeballs and pulling them out and stuff like that and then just it not being that triple a level like the big blockbuster but it's a fun game if you guys can play it i think it's going to be leaving premium the because originally it dropped day one in playstation now um I think it's leaving July 4th, so you have a couple days to play it if you guys want to go check that out. I've also been playing Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, what else have I been playing? Just everything, man. Dead Cells, uh, The Messenger. i just been downloading games like a madman because uh, they're all free in there. I mean, free, quote unquote, because we're paying for it. Uh, before we move forward, shout out to uh, everybody members you guys names are scrolling at the bottom of the screen if you guys want to join hit the blue join icon on the main screen and uh we got a special shout out to people uh, i i work with people that i trust and shout out to mr brian in the chat uh he started a group with uh a gaming forum and I believe in it full heartedly. So we're going to give it a little shout out here. If you guys want to check it out, it's called Icon Era. We'll put the link in the chat. You guys probably have heard of Reset Terra and, and the other places. But if you're like, like me and you want to stay up to date with all the latest news and rumors in the gaming world, I'd consider signing up for Icon Era. It's 100% free. It's an amazing place for passionate gaming discussion. And like I said, it's a great alternative to the other guys so go check them out without further ado let's get into our intros let's hop in here COVID. all COVID. right me, man. Yeah. so COVID let's too. let's get to our intros we got innate what's going on man hey what's going on man yeah you know innate or the real innate known on twitter um yeah man i'm just uh enjoying it gaming uh Going for the platinum, funny enough, on uh, No Man's Sky Ooh, right now. Nice. Uh, yeah, I've played that since the very beginning, and I uh, so, really enjoy it nice. a lot. So I uh, went back to that and just been going deep on that, and then playing the uh, demo for uh, Live a Live uh, that got released during the Nintendo Mini. So yeah, man, I'm just I'm having a ball. So how long how, how long do you think the platinum takes for No Man's Sky for people that are trying to if they want to go try that out? Um, I'm gonna be honest. It's going you're gonna have to take take your time. It'll but take forever. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're talking at least sixty to eighty hours. But if you're playing the game as it's intended through the storyline and going through things and getting your new ships and all these different things. The majority of the trophies will come naturally. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Are you going to try it out in VR when PSVR 2 comes around? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Me and my girl are big uh, VR uh, people. So we, we got the the original PSVR and I have the Quest and all that. So um, essentially, I could try it out now because I also own it on PC um, mm -hmm. and I can have the link cable for my quest to play via my uh, PC so I could do that too but yeah via PSVR 2 I'm, I'm definitely looking to try it because it looks great on PS5 upgrade oh yeah dude well it's good to have you here uh, next up we got Rome what's going on dude yo what's up Salty what up panel appreciate you having me Salty it's good to Sitting have you here, here brother thank you bro yeah uh, hey I'm, I'm, I'm actually been playing a bunch of uh 
of uh, Mario Strikers, uh, Ooh, nice. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, the new one that just came out, uh, Shredder's Revenge. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my son been playing a lot of UFC four. That's because he, you know, it was just in uh, PS Plus or whatever a few months ago. So he feel like he can challenge me. So I've been beating the brakes off him and that. That. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff hey, what, like that. What's that uh free to play game on the Switch, the car game you, you showed on Twitter? What's that called? Oh, that's um Asphalt Nine. So I was seeing I, I seen somebody playing it in my friends list mm. and I'm like, this dude was logging on playing this stuff like every time I get on there, I'll see him on there. And I'm like, man, this game must be good. So I tried it out and I was just kind of blown away. Yeah, so that's what it was, Asphalt Nine. So you you mentioned it, so the free to play aspects does that like kind of show up pretty fast in that game because it lo- the gameplay looked fun you know man uh, yeah it does as a matter of fact uh yeah it's it's the 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 free to play aspects of it kind of is pretty aggressive it shows his face like instantly mm-hmm. but um when and it kind of it's kind of it's kind of a it's kind of tricky to get through it to to finally get to a game because it's it's at every turn it's trying to stop you to upgrade something, do something. But you know, once you get into the game, it's amazing. I I really think it would be a better game if they didn't make it that way. You know, free to play. That's right. I'm a, I'll have to bust out my Switch one of these days. I I I think the last game I bought was Luigi's Mansion Three. So I need to. My kid is is on there and she plays. Um, Fortnite on there you know sometimes and she usually, she mainly uses it for youtube because it lasts forever the the battery or whatever but i'm looking forward to breath of the wild too that's but that's not going to be coming out for a while but i'm always looking for games i want to play on it you know so i might download that car game and give it a whirl you know play okay. it on the go but it's good to, okay. good good to have you here brother um next up we got caraba what's going on man what's up man thanks for having me again what have uh, you been playing brother I got the platinum intellect. Finally, I'm done with that game. Bro, uh, I have to. I have to tell you before you go on with Celeste that because they call me salty for a reason, right? The games, yeah, they trigger me sometimes. And Celeste was one of those games where it didn't take that long to trigger me because it's like I don't know. Because we talked about this, Caraba. It's the dying thing. Because you're like, well, you play Souls games, and I'm like, well, with Souls games, typically I have like a space in between like dying but like with celeste uh they have these you got a platform through there and it it is tough man and and you're like dying over and over and over and over and even if you progress and you almost make it to the end you got to go back in the beginning if you hit you know the wall or something so that's my biggest issue with celeste is it just (laughs) made made me rage you know um yeah so with celeste there's actually a checkpoint uh, you get, uh, but I feel you like uh, so many times uh, you see in my gameplay where I say the beginning and the middle is literally cakewalk, but the end I mm-hmm. kept dying for hours at. But I'm a stubborn motherfucker, so I want to get it, then I get it. That's how it's about. It genuinely, it's almost like when. Uh, uh, what called um, Wooly uh, challenged me to beat mm-hmm. uh, Eternal. Uh, I took it uh, personal with Celeste and I beat Celeste. I actually got the Platinum Celeste, which is this is my second um, proudest moment. The one would the first one would be getting the Platinum in uh, Solar Ash. But with Celeste, the issue with it is. If it worked, it's fantastic. But if. And I'm going to go on a little rant on this one. Um, they put Celeste on such high pedestal. It's true. That they can't see the negative in it. So if I come here and say, this mechanic doesn't work, this mechanic doesn't work, and the DLC mechanics that they implemented is some of the words that I've ever seen. They're going to fight uh, tooth and nail to defend it. And it's sad because I literally dropped Celeste at some point because when I was doing a move 
and it just didn't work for me until I had a conversation with the developer and actually told me how to do the move and I did it and it worked for the most of the time. So That's even, uh, and the developer is not still the developer of today, but just an ex of developers. But to, to make it short, it, it's frustrating because if more people were vocal about Celeste, then the game would have had improvement. It would have had patches. It would have had a fix, uh, fixing for certain mechanics. And yeah. if, like, for example, Celeste 2 is coming out, and because no one has spoke about the previous issues, we might get the same issues from part one in, into part two, because no one spoke about them beside me. I've yet to see anyone. On on the YouTube video, I've seen people complain about uh, the shit that I complain about. So I truly hope they fix it, because it got a good concept now make yeah. it work yeah and the other thing yeah astro cyborg in the chat says celeste makes you get good souls games make you farm i mean not i mean you can farm in most souls games but I, i'll give you that astro for sure um Celeste is in PS Plus if you're interested, says uh, Josh. Um, if you don't mind, uh, Karabal, we're just going to move on so we can get through the, the intros. Sure. But no it's good to have you here, my friend. Uh, Wooly Gamer, what's going on, my dude? Hey, what's good, brother? I'm uh, <clears throat> glad to be here. Just bear with me if I'm sounding a little bit rough or I go a bit quiet. It's probably because I'll have muted my mic and started coughing my guts up. I'm still recovering from covid um but i'm a bit better today than i was yesterday mm -hmm. um things are slowly but surely improving just been down with the with the big v unfortunately um but yeah the things are good um congratulations salty on the 23k that's nice, awesome man. uh well deserved also um i've been i recently got round to installing mass effect uh trilogy uh and man what a what a nostalgic kind of gave me warm fuzzy feeling uh playing mass effect one again for the first oh, really? time in ages bro like i i i played the mass effect trilogy a, a lot later than when it, all three had been out for a period of years and the ps3 collection had released and mm -hmm. i bought the collection on ps3 and i was kind of uh, battling a, a bout of depression at the time when i was in a, in my flat on my own um in like i was i must have been around 20 20 years old 21 years old something like that um and so it was about eight eight years ago and uh nine nine years ago something like that and i uh i remember playing playing uh through the trilogy um and absolutely loving it like it was it, it, it was weird though because mass effect 2 didn't hit the notes that it did for most people um because i went straight into it after mass effect 1 and there was a huge jarring adjustment where some things weren't as in depth in mass effect two, uh, mm -hmm. as, as, as they were in mass effect one. Uh, I can't quite recall what exactly, but I'm, I'm definitely going to remember as I continue to play the first or through the first game again. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm really glad to be back playing those awesome games. Um, and I've also, downloaded wasteland 3 so i'm playing through that got that dirt cheap and uh, been enjoying that um problem with me is with those kind of games same with uh, divinity original sin 2 and i absolutely love that game but i spend far too much time stuck in the first few hours of the game because i'm just forever rechanging and uh, 
restarting to try a different build and new characters and i just can't ever seem to commit to one build and it really flipping annoys me man i'm my own worst enemy when it comes to these games i'm forever just got rehashing what i've just done and i never seem to move forward because i'll just experiment with builds all the time but here's hoping i can focus and continue to progress um but yeah, uh, things things are good. Uh, looking forward to a great show, and it's great to have such a lit panel tonight. So, well, it's good to have you, man. Uh, I don't know what I did when I had COVID, but it's just you got to power through it, and then eventually you just feel better, and then things are good. So it's good to have you here, man. Um, Cheers, Chris, man. what's going on, man? Yo. <clears throat> Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, yeah, man, uh, glad to be back. Uh, there's not a lot of things that happened this week, right? I don't think so. Um, but no, nah, it's been kind of light. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been really doing that much. I mean, doing <coughs> what I've been playing, I've been uh, Diablo three. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's pretty outdated though. Like I can tell, it's like a 2012 game. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but it's is it's pretty it's pretty fun. And then um I'm playing Wild Arms. I'm actually playing that right now. I'm playing the PS one Wild Arms on on premium, PlayStation Plus Premium. How's the streaming and, uh, for you, my friend? Good, right? No, it's actually no I downloaded it. It's, oh you downloaded native. it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's a PS one game. It's a native download. Did you try uh, any of the streaming? You before you get to that, um, did you try the streaming yet? You like it? No, I haven't tried any streaming at all. Okay, all right. So, how's Arm no, Wild Arms? Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's it's pretty good. I played the only Wild Arms games that I played was the third one, um, on the PS2. I had never played the first two, so I'm playing the first one right now. And yeah, I mean it's pretty. You know, it's a pretty typical. You know, uh, '90s turn-based jrpg i mean the set in like a western setting or like the entire planet is like a western setting and stuff like that cowboys and there's like alien invasion and you know shit like that so mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty okay so far i'll say so but that and then um the games i do plan on start uh soon before um xenoblade 3 and um what's the other game that's gonna live a live comes out is um, I bought Divinity Original Sin 2 on PSN Cell about a week ago. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. You bought Divinity and... Original Sin 2? Yeah. Oh, Chris, um, you're in for such a treat, man. Oh, my days. One of the yeah, best no, games I ever made. Yeah, I heard it's one of the best uh, RPGs. Like, actual, like, true RPG RPGs. Yeah, it's so Dungeons & Dragons, the video game. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Hey, maybe we can co-op on it because I know it has. Co-op. Uh, mate, I'd, 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 I've been looking for a co-op buddy with that game for so long. I am way down for that. That that would be awesome. Yeah, 100%. and then, um, but yeah, but I mean, but other than that, you know, everything's everything's Gucci. So let's get into uh, the topics. Yes, sir. Uh, let's start off with. <laughs> The leaked information for the new Horizon TV show. I want to get you guys' thoughts because um, I've I've kind of made my thoughts clear on um, the story for Horizon Two. Uh, didn't really hit me the way uh, Horizon One did for some reason. Uh, I still have like one mission left to finish the game. Game, so maybe we'll all wrap it up together and I'll. I'll, I'll kind of changed my mind there uh but i did a video on this and i I talked about like the difference between uh the the quality of uh shows when it comes to sony and their ips and the way that they curate them or pass them to other companies to make them as opposed to uh let's say halo right with master cheeks and uh the way that they've been handling uh that as well but some of the details that came out for horizon the netflix show it's going to be called horizon 2074 uh the the crew includes talent from the boys i don't know if you guys have seen the latest uh season of the boys i haven't watched it but it's it's really good and the expanse 
Uh, Jeff Grubb put some information out there. They're going to be filming in Toronto. Uh, some of the things that caught my attention here is the show is going to be taking place before the fall. So 2074, uh, and it's going to split time between the time you see in the games and then uh, the times uh, when things begin to fall. And I think that this idea is pretty cool because you can see – uh, the way the world was before. And I think that's probably why I have kind of a disconnect with the world sometimes because it's hard for me to see uh, the people that are in the game and the way that they act and their weapons and stuff like that. Uh, and, and imagine that it's an actual planet Earth that I, you know people could have been living on uh, in 2074. Uh, but I think that I think that this has a lot of potential in terms of a show. It's going to be on Netflix, I believe. I don't have a Netflix per, uh, subscription right now. I canceled it because they really don't have the content I want to watch. Um, but uh, anybody want to jump in and give their thoughts on this TV show or like Horizon in general, the story, like whatever you guys can, uh, you know, talk about it. Not Hop. not by left. I love the story. Mm hmm. I really enjoyed it, and uh, um, here's the thing, with the first one, I think you loved it more because you were new to the world. Yeah. With the second one, you need to, uh, you gotta be invested in Aloy as a character. I'm not gonna lie, at first I hated her character. In the mm -hmm. first, in the second game, most likely because how she was acting, but she almost like went on a development arc, if what you call it in anime, and the end result, I can't wait for quote unquote part three. It's like this is perfection for me. I love now Aloy as a character, how she develops herself and stuff like that. And other than that, yeah, no, I'm genuinely curious how they're going to get uh, out of this one. Just one thing, Horizon, Horizon 3 is going to be massive. Not in case uh, of war, but more like scale. The war is going to be insane. Leave mm -hmm. it at that. Mm -hmm. I just think that... Um you know, it's a new IP. It came out not too long ago. So there's a potential of like oversaturating the market uh, when it comes to how much you're putting. I think we're getting some reverb off of you, Caraba. Um, there's a potential for oversaturation if you just, oh, you know, put so much product on the on the market, people can't really handle it. I th Do you guys hear that? That reverb? Yeah. Caraba, yeah, you're, you're getting some reverb off your mic, dude. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so since it's a new IP, it's great. You know, you want to capitalize off of that for your products. And, you know, Sony's good at doing that. Um, but when did Horizon Zero Dawn come out? 2017 or 16? It's hard to keep track. I think it was one of those. 2006, 17. 2016, 17. Is it 17 or 16? I think 16, between 16 no, and 17. No, 17, 17. Okay. Yeah, so February, February, I remember February, okay, so 17, not that long ago, right? So we had uh, Horizon, the original. It's a new IP. It's great. Everybody's super hyped about it. Then we get a sequel in 2022. Then they're going to do the VR version, and then they're going to be doing the show. It's just like a lot at once. Uh, the so DLC a year later, too. The DLC. I just think the whole IP, the whole IP is overrated. It's not Tell particularly us. inspiring mm. either. It's not. Yeah. For goodness sake, it's it's it's. In your opinion, Con the concept, <laughs> the concept is giant robot be beasts and dinosaur-like beasts, uh, giant robots, uh, and you have kind of you've gone back to what do you call it? Um, uh, kind of uh, prim primitive bow bows and arrows and uh, like. It's. I. I feel like I, I just. I've always felt found it extremely 
extremely generic. I mean, original concept, they had like a soldier sh- using guns, shooting giant machines. And I'm like, who, well, who in their right mind thought, hang on, no, let's, let's, instead of using guns with lasers and bullets, let's swap it for shooting bows and arrows at giant metallic beasts like that's gonna put a dent in them and i just honestly like i've never found it particularly inspiring um the story is all very whimsical and i don't know wishy-washy uh, like the chosen one is a clone i'm thinking of the for the first game come on guys it's been five years deal with it yeah if you think that's a if that spoiled it for you, but I, I don't know, guys. Like, I just, I just think Gorilla haven't exactly. The, I'm gonna. Sh- I'm just. I, I just don't like the IP, and I, I don't. I don't like the IP. I never have. The second game is great. It's a lot of fun, but I could not give two, two dry dog turds about Aloy, about the flipping. All the plot twists, uh, you know, all of that, it all feels inconsequential to me. Wooly, so it it takes a lot of guts, man, obviously, to have a thought process that's counter to the masses, right? So I give you a lot of props for that. Killzone had better law. Killzone had way better law. Flipping the hell gas. It's like a parallel to to Nazis, except they're an alien race. And, like, there was... there, there is so much depth to that universe that could be brought out and 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 reimagined and revitalized and I don't know just sorry carry on I'll it's a, we'll, we'll go more in depth into it because it is one of the pillar franchises for PlayStation right now. Uh, shout out to Bor 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 uh, Country with the two dollars. I think this is for you, Wooly. Please explain Elden Ring's story, dot, 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 disingenuous. How would you respond to that? That don't make sense. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't really make sense, right? Yeah, make that, that makes make sense. sense. Yeah. Is Elden, Elden, Elden Ring... What does that have to do? It's not... With... I mean, the Souls games are not built on a... It's not like a story-based game on this. I tell you what, this, you know the what story of Elden Ring is a lot more <laughs> engrossing. Uh, like, the, the individual character arcs among, in Elden Ring had me far more gripped than... than no um, Lord, would that any be of better? the story of Horizon yeah. Forbidden West. I mean, Horizon Forbidden West is a nine out, a nine out of ten in game for me. I love it, but I don't love it for for the story, nor for the the way that the story is delivered. I don't. I think. I think it's all very clunky. It's all very, you know, two generations old in 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 the way that it presents the cutscenes and presents itself. It's Mass Effect. We're talking Mass Effect era. Cut, cut scenes in terms of not not obviously not visual visual fidelity and not the graphical quality but in terms of the the the, the way just nothing's nothing seamless everything's like cut transition to the cut scene and and then back to the gameplay you know it's it doesn't feel very natural like for example god of war 2018 that is seamless you know that's all one take mm-hmm. um I just think that, that there's nothing. It's all very safe, and it's it's a little archaic in in the way that it's delivered. Um, but I think the at least Elden Ring kind of has a, a huge level of mystery to it that keeps the the, the viewer engaged, and things are re- it doesn't take itself too seriously at times. Like Alexander the Great Jar, like Alexander the Great Jar. I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't, you couldn't, it couldn't yeah. sound more hilarious, you know, um, and his story arc, and then you end up fighting him after going through this whole journey of saving his ass. And he always puts himself in situations that result in, in his life being in danger. And he thinks it's just, it's his butter scratch. It's fine. And, and he's there in the middle of lava, like, <laughs> and and you're like, oh, Alexander's at it again, up to his usual antics. And then next thing you know, it would be his honor to fight to the death and to fight you. Um, 
and you get this amazing reward for it. Uh, like it, it's engrossing, but it's not the main reason why you play the game. And I know it, you, the same can be said for Horizon Forbidden West, but enough with the deflections, guys. Like if I'm going to criticize Horizon Forbidden West and you're like, but what about Elden Ring? Who freaking said Elden Ring is the best story ever? I didn't. It's, it's just what about isms pretty much. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah. So, um, I agree with Willie uh, on some things um, because definitely in Zero Dawn and Forbidden West, and I, and I like I enjoy both of those games, right? More so Forbidden West. I thought Forbidden West was was definitely a step ahead, uh, better than um, uh, Zero Dawn. But it got to the point with both of those games where I don't know. I just kind of lost interest in like the dialogue and like the you know, the overall, like, the surrounding cast of characters and stuff like that. It's like, 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 some of them shits is cool, like, but after a while, I just, I just uh, ended up skipping some shit. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's like, like, I kind of, <laughs> I, I skipped like, a lot of shit in two, so I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of, I kind of skipped the shit. And I'm not saying that the game, the game is still like, like, like Willie said, it's still like a nine out of 10 to me, but, um, the, the 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 story is nothing like to me is nothing like oh my god this is like something like i haven't you know experienced before or, or something like super new, uh, original in terms of the 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 structure of the narrative of like you know halo being the hero character right to save humanity and and what's going on and stuff like that you know what i mean it has original concepts like like you know robot dinosaurs you know, you're, you're a hunter and you're hunting these things down or whatever. Like the the concepts and the themes um, is very original in my opinion. Um, but like the way everything comes together overall, um, it ends it ends up just losing my interest. I'm not even saying that it's bad because I don't think it's bad at all. And I understand like people are just like really can really gravitate towards that universe or whatever. But it just didn't. It, this doesn't really hold my interest to the point where I was like. I hear about a TV show and I'm like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, we get more lore and, and shit like that. I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm gonna watch it because I enjoy the games, but I hope it's good. But you know, live live action shows on like I don't, I don't know, it's like live action shows from video game stories and lores and stuff like that. Really, they really don't, uh, they really don't jive with me that much, right? I'd rather have like animated shows like an Arcane or or a Castlevania. But who knows? Maybe Sony found the right people. Right, was this and The Last of Us and mm-hmm. whatever they're gonna do with Ghost of Tsushima and can can break that, you know, can you know break what? that. I think the main problem um, is Chris. I think Aloy just isn't that interesting. Compare yeah, her probably. to Geralt of Rivia. Compare her to Geralt no, of, of Rivia. Some people. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, like it just faced the fact like she is <laughs> not that interesting. <laughs> She's extremely aloof. She's very kind of, uh, you know one note what monotone or you know and and y- you might say oh but Geralt of Rivia is monotone and one note well I'd say that's a little different that's kind of like solid snake you know a lot of he's there's a there's a, a, a huge amount of charm to his character and depth to his character and res he's very reserved yeah but he can he also has a a softness to him and a certain certain depth to his character that makes him makes him have a huge range of kind of uh a huge personality range where he'll be compassionate in certain situations and 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 brutal in others that yeah, but the delivery the delivery awesome. of Geralt was still like it was still it, it Geralt still fell flat sometimes in his delivery though he, he falls flat mm-hmm. but but he can say yeah, because, a lot with a simple grunt but, a simple grunt yeah, from Geralt can enough, say a thousand um, words because yeah. that, that that comes Morning. that comes but that that actually comes with the with the narrative that him being a witcher, right? Because witchers are mutants, right? Ever since they're children, they're experimented it's with or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they don't have no emotion, really? right? So I so from a narrative, it makes sense why Garrett is like that. So it does add on more to your point. Um, yeah. But I, 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 I wasn't. I, I wasn't. Finished, I wasn't sorry, finished bro. With a, <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't finished with the with the zero dawn, but um, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not really. I'm. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like. We'll we'll see. Hopefully, I mean, it's better than from what I hear. The Halo, right? The Halo <laughs> TV oh show. God, I, I hear, yeah, that, that that and that goes more towards my point. Video game live adaptations 
of either video games or cartoons or animes or whatever. Um, well, I would say more anime because there have been really good live ad- adaptations from cartoons, right? But um, they usually don't. They usually don't don't really add too much more. Like I would tell you, me at that point, I was like, I'd rather play the game because I, I feel like the game is more engaging to deliver the story than, than than the shows are and stuff like that. So, but my bad. Go ahead, Omar. You say, okay. Yeah. So real, real I was quick, listening. Real quick. Hope pause on that. Uh, I'm I'm confused about these super chats. Real quick, Tenet OVB with the Australian two dollars. Well, one of them. What happened to support the devs and buy games? I don't know. No idea. No idea what, what you're saying I don't with understand. that. <laughs> Uh, Fay Long with the one night. You have to explain yourself with that one. Uh, Fay Long, shout out to you with the one ninety nine Final Fantasy Final Final Fantasy Seven OG and Final Fantasy Seven Remake. Uh, best games ever. I mean, mm. I, hey, can you guys hear me? Yo, so what's, up? Yeah, what's, what's up? Yeah, what's up, Jez? What's good, man? Damn, what's up? What are, you ta- what are you talking about? Are you talking about? Uh, we're talking about the TV. So we're, we're talking about the TV show. And I kind of oh, went the into like, one. so yeah, like the 2074 concept. And then we kind of like went into the, the, the story in general and how strong it is. Like, is it a strong story to be able to adapt it into a TV show? Uh, uh, Horizon? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you go. Um, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, no, go. I will go after you then. Uh, Cause you're new. Jeff. Yeah. Just, uh, so, First of all, uh, Wooly got everybody wa- riled up, right? He gave his take. He said he didn't think it's that strong of a story, yeah, right? You don't like Horizon and the character or whatever. <laughs> so, what do you what do you think personally? Like, and and I, it, how it would go into a TV show? Yeah, I think the first game, <coughs> she was definitely. I think the world and the and the idea of the world and this kind of like futuristic but still primal type like idea is mm-hmm. really something that they could build on. I do think that her character, even the voice acting and just the, the way it was in the first game, I think they, she was kind of came off as very kind of very plain and blah. Uh, I think the second game, they really made her, they fleshed her character out more and she mm-hmm. served more of like a, I definitely think that they, they added a lot of depth to her character in making her, um, you know, rally the troops and, and see the bigger picture and know her purpose. And that, like, the first, it's similar to, like, like uh, I would say, like, Star Wars, like, the first one, like, Luke Skywalker, where he was just like, eh, eh, mm-hmm. what am I doing here? And then all of a sudden, he when he knows that he's the Jedi, he's like, now I know what I got to do. And he got a little bit more character and a little more badass. Like, I think that's what they kind of did with her in the second one. Um, I think that the, I, I was very impressed with the story in the second one. I liked how they took it to a bigger level and and made it uh, they just keep blowing up the world and it's funny because near the end of the game you know her um the guy she's she's like when she's going in with the um you know her partner and stuff he basically is like you know before we were just worried about meridian now it's like the world and all this other stuff and it just keeps pulling it out further and further and i think you know it definitely lends itself to they could they could make a show with it you know, but mm-hmm. it's up to them to kind of determine how the character is going to be in the show. Like, who thought a Sonic movie would be great? It's I true. wouldn't. It's true. You know, who thought so- Sonic Two was awesome? I watched it about five times already. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? And and they just and and I think the Sonic movie is better than the games. That uh, the games gave Sonic no personality. You don't talk. You don't do anything. It's true. Man, and he's like all like wispy. Like you know, he, he's actually a fun character in these movies and. That's doing the writing and the acting and what they do with the movie. So if they do something with her, you know, I think there's potential there because I think the IP and the whole idea of this futuristic primal, you know, this technology in this kind of primal age with bows and arrows fighting these 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 computer systems and this AI, it lends itself, I think, to a really interesting uh, thing. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of corny CGI and things like that. Uh, you know, who knows, because it's not going to probably be a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, nothing could be as bad as what they did to Halo. That's all. I'm saying. <laughs> that is yeah. absolutely a disgrace. It yeah. was not even not even they had the first 15 minutes were good. The rest of it was a disaster. And they did some CGI kind of stuff, it looked like a cutscene from the game to try to bring people back in. But I don't know who that was for because it completely just disrespected the franchise. And they, 
they just it, it made no sense cortana gets injected into the back of his head meanwhile for, for 20 years he's been pulling a chip out of his head of ai cortana plugging her into things and they put her in the back of his head that he see that she sees him taking a dump you know what i mean like what kind, what are we doing here like simple things like i'm not talking about they just destroy that thing and season two who the hell knows who he's gonna be uh having relations with it turned into goddamn mass effect yeah uh, I, I just wears armor I don't understand, like with these video game franchises, how they let they allow like these directors and writers to make the decision to not research the game. I don't know how that that would you know end well. And the Halo the Halo writers and stuff said that they didn't really pay attention to the game much, and that's one of the main problems. Like, well, how are you going to get the uh, like if it was a test to be like you not studying the actual subjects of the test exactly. and just going in blind. And it's like, yeah, the reason why it's not going to be good or people are not going to like it is because you're just doing whatever you want with it. And yeah. well, I think it's a movie studio. Like Sony's, they make TV shows. They made breaking bad. They on everything. Like they know how to make syndicated TV. They know how to make movies. So I think that taking their IP and but like even the Uncharted movie, even as weird as cast that was, it worked out. Like it was pretty damn good. You know, I thought it was a pretty good movie. And even though Mark Wahlberg was like, you know, it was so weird seeing them two, but they kind of brought it in together at the end with doing the mustache and stuff like that. So, you know, that worked out. So like I think they could do it. I think the Last of Us thing is gonna be done really it's going to be a, a good, powerful series. I think they're really taking that seriously. So we'll see where they go with this. Um, I don't know. You know. It'll be interesting. But I think Horizon is definitely an IP that they could do something with. And, you know, just like what The Witcher did on Netflix, I say, you know, it made you want to play the game. I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, The Witcher. The second season was incredible. I, I loved it. I, I thought that was so great. The first season had a little bit of a slow start with the first three episodes, but the second season was great. Yeah, I agree. It's one of the best adaptations for video yeah. games. How you feeling, by the way, man? Like I know last week uh, you just like, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good, man. Uh, good. It was it was weird. Good. I I did the video and people said I sounded constipated, so my voice came back <laughs> and I'm good to go. You know, so I'm it's good. Better, it's man. good to be back talking video games. You know, uh, with yeah. the fellas, uh, Caraba. Uh, what's your take, man? Yeah, I was listening to Uri and I'm like. Are you sure uh -oh. you played the second one? Because you sound to me you played the first one. Those are fighting every, words, Wooly. Because uh -oh, every, every single... Every single... Say that again. Issue Sorry. That you he had with Aloy, he said, they he fixed said, it with the said, second one. He said he, it doesn't sound like you played the second game. All right. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you your, your issues, no they fixed it with the second game. They, like they fix, if, oh, bro. I said it's a nine out of ten game, but don't. That no, no, no. Mean that I I'm not talking shit, about the gameplay. I'm about talking the, about. I'm talking well, about the story, and I'm talking about the character. It wasn't a nine, out, ten, wasn't a nine out of ten story. It wasn't a nine out of ten story, and it certainly wasn't a nine out of ten. A nine out of ten character. It's a nine out of ten game for every reason other than, other than the way that the story is delivered and the story itself. So like, you didn't like the story to the second one? Oh uh, no, I, I thought you know, it, I think it has potential to be pretty interesting, especially if you end up going to. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, you I know, know. I'm like the spoilers, I'm right? The end, anyway, yeah. I think it has potential to open up the universe uh, the, of Horizon to mm. out beyond the, the the rainforests and the you know and the deserts and stuff. And a lot of the issues that I had with the first game about exploration not being very rewarding. And traversal being a little bit, um, just the climbing, yeah, just not feeling very natural, and the world's reactivity to the player be making you feel like you're not really in the world. It, all of that sh stuff was beautifully fixed, and with a lot of tweaking, I made the game extremely rewarding and fun. I removed the hood. A simple swipe up of the of the middle pad brings the hood back. So you can orientate yourself and stuff, but other than that, the entire HUD was was gone. Um, I, and I had enemies set to very difficult um, in terms of the damage they deal. Um, so Aloy could die very easily, but I also had the enemy health set to easy, so that I could still feel like I'm not just shooting paper clips all the time and worrying about my rash, what what materials I'm rationing to 
to conserve ammo. And, and you know, it, it, it just, it, the, the combat wasn't fun when enemies would take all of your resources to kill. Um, you couldn't experiment and enjoy the combat for what it was. So I fixed all of that and I ended up having a, a, an amazing time with the game. And I much prefer Forbidden West over Horizon Zero Dawn. But don't tell me like that just because I think Aloy's character, Aloy as a character and as a person, isn't interesting at all. I find a very one note. I find her quite aloof. Uh, but even though she, First of she all, isn't. What did, what did one note? You have shown. Again, if you were talking about the third game, I would have agreed with you. In the third game, she was a one note character, but not in the second game. She went <sighs> through a developmental arc. This is why I'm. I'm genuinely questioning. No one, like, no one could could interrupt her from her mission. No, nothing. Nobody. Nothing was important except her mission. Uh, and blah 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 blah. Took a lot of took a lot of co co, co uh, convincing of others for her to let them help. Um, and she for her to grow to actually give a shit. Um, even though she did give a shit, the point is is that she she was just very kind of. All right, you guys worry about your petty little problems while I go and save the planet. And that's kind of how she was very much for for a lot of the cutscenes, bro. Like a lot of the cutscenes uh, that I was what, watching. Uh, I'm, I'm, maybe what, I'm being slightly hyperbolic here, but so what happened with Beta? One noted. What happened with uh, what's his name? Well, well, uh, she friend. was she what was no? frustrated. She was very frustrated with Beta. Yeah, she she found her annoying and a nuisance and. She had yeah, to. She, go, she had to force turn. herself, force herself to, to try and see herself, see herself in beta. Which I know it's a, it's a, it's an arc, but and obviously I'm not saying she's strictly one note that no, there's no range at all. I'm just saying that she, she just doesn't. She's not an interesting person. She's not an interesting character oh, okay. uh, to me, to me. But that's just my opinion, yeah, and I'm allowed cool. that cool. opinion. I just uh, think there are far in... more interesting characters. In, 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 flipping, even in in the game itself, there are far more interesting characters like Val. And <clears throat> but hold on, hold on! I thought you didn't care about the all the side characters. What? When did I say that? You, you, no, you actually said that. You that, actually no, said I think that. that no, I think that, I, that, that was Chris. That was Chris. That, that Bro, was Chris. Bro, people, that was people Chris. are getting uh, people in the chat as well. Like Neo, uh, shout out to Neo in the chat. He was confusing Chris with me before. Yeah, like, Chris said he wasn't too interested in the side characters for the most part. Oh, sorry about that. No, yeah, no, no, it's problem. fine. But listen, listen. Uh, Neo Wise was saying you, 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 you clearly skipped all the cutscenes if you think Aloy isn't an interesting character. And it's like, you know what? Say whatever the fuck you want. Uh, I, you, you, because my opinion differs from yours means that I have I've skipped the cutscenes and haven't played the game. Uh, I mean, it, it's 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 an extremely asinine and immature take to make. That I, you know, I'm allowed my opinion. But I don't. I don't have to find Aloy interesting to like the game. I love the game, but I do not think this game dis needs a movie or, uh, or or a series at all. I don't think the world is particularly well crafted in terms of law. I think it's all very scatter scatter and kind of like, oh, how can we make this? What what next? You know, now we're going extraterrestrial for goodness sake, and it's like to to me, it's just like, uh, really, like we've we've kind of been the whole terraform and the planet before. You know, Man of Steel did it. Man of Steel flipping, they wanted to terraform the planet, and and it's like we've we've we, I've seen this plot line a million of times, and the game just. The plot of the game isn't very original to me. I would much prefer a Killzone uh, revival and reboot, where it, it explores the 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 law and the world of the Hellgast. And that was Aliens too, right? Don't they Aliens? Yeah, that was Aliens, aliens. too. Yeah. But I mean, it, you so, know, it, it's an entire civilization, whereas this is more like a. Cre yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> real quick, real quick before you hop in here. All right. So Ryan with a one seventy nine, 
that's pounds, right? I get it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, why could you only fly at the end of the for- Forbidden West? That annoyed me, dude. And that's a conversation in itself. But uh, Bor Bor Country, again, with the what about ism, uh, $2. Elden Ring is HD PS3 graphics, controls, bugs, no story. Okay. You could tell he ain't play. No. <clears throat> okay. Um, welcome to Elden, uh, Elden Ring. Uh, Horizon. Uh, um, what's called um, TV show? Um, the Last of Us is going to be the test for me. If Thanks. they do the Last of Us justice, then they should be able to nail this one. And yeah. if- it depends on my because it's not the same people making no. either shows. It's two different crews, producers, writers. So, oh, for so, goodness' sake! Hey, I can't True. believe we're talking about Horizon. What about the Gran Turismo movie? Oh my god, dude. Oh, so dude. Do you do that? Don't get me started. I'm sorry, I'm guys, sure guys, I'm sorry, but it's comments like this from True Witty, uh, sh- uh, two quid from True Witty. So Horizon has all these problems to you, but not Elden Ring. How the hell? You, you tell me about the main character of Elden Ring and how personable they are and how they react to NPCs. Yeah, like, it's not, it's, it's such a, a what? It's such a what's the word a deflectory comment that makes no si- it makes no sense it, at all. Like the, it's, 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 with that, Elden Ring, they already uh, made comment, great comments like movie. that is like obviously the a reach. Like it's obviously they don't like your opinion, and and that's fine. You don't have to like nobody's opinion. Elden Ring right? has like nothing that, to do like, with this game. No, but yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's ignore the Elden Ring comments. it keeps derailing the conversation. No, I just in order to defend. I, I challenge anybody, right, in the comments that 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 doesn't like what Wooly said or what I said, particular the story. Like I said, I love the fucking game is amazing. It's a game of the year contender or so whatever. Out of ten games, yeah. I, don't this, know what you want I, I challenge anybody to defend Horizon without mentioning Elden Ring, and you y'all lose Yo, all so, y'all. Points. So I want to. Uh, you don't even want to do it because you know I can. No, I here, don't need here, to mention. Here, I'm just. I'm. I'm. It's so. It's so curious. Because I guess it's because these games came out around the same time, right? Same month, basically. Uh, it's just, it's weird because it's, there's certain individuals, I feel, that they can't give credit to one without bashing the other or vice versa because it, it I don't know if it takes away the chances for game of the year for one or I, uh, that one's multi-plat and one's a PlayStation property. It's just I, no matter I what, think- without, a, without a shadow oh of a doubt, since, since we started here, doing this podcast since these games launched they're always going head to head and it's like they're not even the same thing gonna, yeah, exactly. they're not even the same put, type of game and then they're even not, the same if type. you're gonna put horizon forbidden west against a game put it against the witcher right mm-hmm. put mm-hmm. it against a game at least that's of a similar genre and and that this game is clearly taking inspiration by uh, you know the combat of horizon forbidden west is better than the witcher hands down but the law the characters the story all of that shit is superior and and some of the systems as well uh, is better in the witcher to me personally like i would still say horizon forbidden west is an amazing game but it's an amazing game for different reasons and it's mm. the exact same with elden ring it's the same with the with the witcher but you can't keep throwing elden ring out there uh, um, I'm measuring it by the same by the same uh, categories, like I have, because it's a completely different game. Completely different. I agree with you. Game. With that one, was a stupid comment to make. However, uh, to explain Sati's point, the reason why people bring up uh, Forbidden West versus Elden Ring is because, from the media standpoint, they gave uh, what's called prop to Elden Ring. And uh, n- neglected to mention bugs and stuff like that. Not all of the media, but most of the it media. It wasn't even buggy. It w- the Elden Ring wasn't buggy at all. It, w- it, it just was. Night was. Nah, nah, Chris. We're not doing it. We are not play, doing did, it. Did you, play, did you play the game? No, I watched the game. Oh, you saw like an Xbox game, dude. Oh, oh my god. No, I have a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine that played that game. No, I have a friend of mine. Did you get the, the, the platinum on Twitch? Matter of fact, 
<laughs> y'all need to understand the difference between bugs and performance right issues. It had performance issues. It has stutter issues, right? Performance issues. Books. That's not yeah. bugs. That's different. Matter of fact, I have I have plenty of footage that I can upload right now, right? I can upload a compilation of way more bugs in my Horizon Forbidden West playthrough. Way more bugs than than in Elden Ring. Yep. And I believe you. Do you know why? Because I played Horizon Zero Forbidden West and I had two bugs. It's all about love with, with these games. Yeah. We, we just got, we got to keep it 100. We'll, we'll move yeah, on eventually. Because, but uh, the, the, the thing is, the reason why I bring this up is because I don't know what... I, it was like the, the franchises that PlayStation has... And the, the franchises that Nintendo's has and Xbox has, because they're moving into different areas, right? Uh, Xbox is doing their Halo Master Chief show, and um, Sony's doing all this stuff with their properties. And I was just going through the list, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, Horizon is like being pushed as that, you know, Aloy as like the face of, of PlayStation. Um, oh, Kratos deserves Kratos, a his own series. Not he he's Halo. getting his own he's getting his own movie or TV show or something like that. They yeah, announced that already. Be. I'm just saying that uh, it spurs the thought process because all of this is connected because it's it's a video game podcast. You know what I'm saying? I saw someone talk about how hi- fired up we are. Yeah, that's the difference between you know fake gamers and gamers that actually have passion about what they're talking about but going forward you know uh, it, it's all about the ips and the new ips and stuff and i think it's a great discussion that can be had uh but regardless of that let us know what you guys think of horizon in terms of a tv show or a franchise in general and and uh if you know woolly had <laughs> some good points or chris mm. or caraba or jez or anybody uh that's what we like to do here but let's uh uh, let's move on to the next hold on. topic. Hold right, on. Go ahead. Let's go not ahead. slide. Hold on. Okay. Because they go was ahead. running for 45 minutes. I'm going to get in there. All hold right. on. Get in there. Tap go in. For it. So for one, the story in Horizon is incredibly cohesive. It is not wishy-washy. And if you played it that way, it may have come off that way. The mm-hmm. lore puts brings together the entire story, fully explains the reason why all the tribes develop the way they do, They talk about this stuff in the story when you play the game and why everything is there and it's all there for an actual reason. Why even the types of machines that were created were created. I know if if you just see it from a distance, yes, they are just dinosaurs and big ass machines, but a lot of them were created for an actual purpose prior to them going out of control and doing the things that they do within this world. So there is a lot to it. Like, I can understand, you know what I'm saying? If you don't particularly love the story, that's fine. Like, I get that. And um, that's perfectly cool. Like, I, I, perso- I personally, to, to not go deep into that, because I personally don't care about this game, and Chris knows that shit, but Elden Ring is incredibly boring to me. I have no ties to any of the characters in that game and whatnot, mm-hmm. but I played it genuinely to see the experience, to, to understand what p- other people like that I don't and that's fine um but to me the story the way it is delivered the character development and world building within Horizon Forbidden West specifically is incredible the characters are, are extraordinarily um lifelike in the regards to the fact that I felt like some of these people were like people I knew um but personally being a black a black man growing up in a black community a lot of the mannerisms that a lot of the black characters have in there are very specific to things that just specifically are something that like someone that, that is, um, you know, from certain communities in like Louisiana or something, right. Someone who grew up in the South, the way they cut off their words at specific things that they say, um, the, you know, the tone of their voice and the accents they have, like all these things are engross you and bring you into this world in an incredible way. And that entire package delivered in a visual fidelity that as someone who plays on PC with an RTX 3080 was impressed with every single second I played that game. So, I mean, yeah. And I still ended up in the same way because I personally believe the climbing was terrible. Um, (laughs) That was absolutely, I don't know what they were thinking with that. Um, 
but I as far my, as my, that goes, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, brother. Uh, I was just going to say, I think, I think it's just, it all feels a little inconsequential. Uh, and that's my, my issue with the game. Like you wanted example, to, you wanted to have more effect on the world. Yeah. Well, yeah, like like your your character maxes out in every category, so that the the you your character ends up no different from you can't really build your character to a specific build and style that that and that it was claimed to because you unlock everything eventually. Whereas with the, say The Witcher, you can have literally. A, a, um, a potion specific build that makes you an absolute wizard with spewing out flame and and, and different signs uh, but you have very weak swords but you're, you're you're a monster when it comes to like your mage powers uh, or witcher powers basically um or you can have uh, be a swordsman where you you have very little as uh, invested in signs but you're an absolute beast with the with the swords and you have mutagens and you can customize the build of your character to 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 for the whole game to play and feel completely different. Um, oh no, and I don't disagree with you because I've also beat The Witcher, so that's the and big difference. Those specific talents for me uh, there that you invest in can alter narratives and dialogue choices. Oh no, and they and they do, which is a big reason why I explain to a lot of people when they play something like The Witcher part of how you start and the choices that you make within the game. And this is the part that I said, I understand where you're coming from because the choices you make do have some significant consequences and can change, you know, the way you play the game entirely, because I personally played heavy on the magic side. I didn't want to delve heavily into the potions mm -hmm. because of all the research and stuff you had to do it in order to keep up with that. And it created an entirely different play style for me. Um, when I played something like uh, The Witcher and I got into the city early because, you know, my my sign uh, ability was way high. So I just waved the guard and was like, yo, get out of my way, you know, versus someone who had to go get the they got to go get permission. So that but that part of it, I definitely get. Um, but uh, what it does play in more in a specific in a in a linear pathway. Right. The way the story mm -hmm. takes place, like you don't deviate. Right in a sense, the way that you do on The Witcher. But pers personally, I just took the game as is. And I still think that you did. You just, this is why I said, this is the an improper way in, in the way, because I got what you're saying now, but it sounded harsh originally. You see yeah, what I'm saying? No, I'm sorry. And I so, agree with you yeah. about the characters. They're extremely impressive. And the world is crafted with such love. But that's not enough for me. Do yeah, you, know you want I mean? you I, want I these say, other things is what you meant. Not that they're they're bad. The game is bad because they're not there. But this is what would have taken the game. This is what would have taken the game to the next level for you. And I think Facts. as long as that's understood, I think people would hear you way differently. Just saying, yeah. you know, I but because I they hear the nine out of ten. You know, is it not different between like for example, uh, what you described, uh, both of you? That sounds more like. Witcher needs to be versus Mass Effect Super instead of Receive. Horizon, because Horizon doesn't have choices like, uh, like forbidden, uh, like uh, must called Mass Effect and The Witcher, nor was were it advertised to be so. Well, well, that's that's what I was telling him that I think I get where he's coming from because he's he's played those games and he loves that in them. Personally, for me, I tend to separate that a little more because I know certain things that I played in certain games is not going to transition. Like, I never expect to play anything else like Mass Effect ever again because I know the amount of dialogue that they had to record just to get the different endings and the different, um, you know, the different pathways and different things to happen. Like, they recorded some of those dialogues three and four times per session like of each dialogue choice. Like, so I understand the amount of work that Bioware had to go through because Mass Effect is one of my favorite games of all time. I have, I have six platinums for that game. So I have the originals and I have the legendary all platinums. Sure. Um, so sure, I, I get where he's coming from. Yeah. And I know what, like, like Karaba is saying, why, why hinder it for that if it wasn't advertised? But he, that's why I said he's not taking it down. His impression was like, hey, I really like these things, and I think this would enhance Horizon a lot for me as a player. And what I love about you know RPGs is the choice. 
So that's why I said, like, I wanted to understand where he was coming from better. And now having the conversation and me saying the things that I liked and understanding that he also likes them. He doesn't hate them. He wants more of certain games into or to be incorporated into, you know, um, the next horizon. You know, should we get that? I just want Mass Effect with uh, gameplay of Horizon. Basically, so yeah, yeah. Well, the the choices and in, in, into the lore and stuff like that. He was Chris is a really big fan of this. He didn't say anything currently, but I know mm-hmm. he is because we've had conversations and spaces about uh, choices and emerging gameplay and how things that you do in the world affect the world. You know, I, I invaded these people. You know, six hours earlier than you, so I saved the entire city. Where in your game, the entire city burned for the rest of the game. You see what I'm saying? Like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, I shout get out, it. shout out to True Witty with the two dollars. Should Sony get CD Projekt Red to improve their Western RPG? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think. Well, it's they funny need he to- said that. Um, one of the, one of the writers is actually one of the writers for the story for the quest, the improved quest hmm. in Forbidden West, is from the CD Projekt Red team who worked on The Witcher. That's why the the quests are better. He actually came yeah. over to assist with that. Also, they work if with they want- uh, what's the name, Tucker Punch, uh, to fix that. Mm-hmm. Chris, what were mm-hmm. you gonna say? Um, if they're like want something to like counter the Bethesda purchase, mm-hmm. right? The, I mean, the only other big purchases in the terms of uh, Western RPGs will be a C- uh, CD Projekt Red. Personally, if if Sony wants to have a studio that produces super quality Western RPGs. It'll probably be Larian Studios, which is like oh, the divinity. I love Larian, bro. Yeah. But I don't but they, they make more CRPGs that are optimized yeah, more for consoles. CRPG. And I don't think Sony will care about that at all. So uh, it, I mean CDPR will 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 be a, a good pickup. And I understand it's like people will be like, no, because of Cyberpunk, but and there's a there that's a multi-layer issue the talent is still there and they're still very talented developers and shit like that so and under under sony management they wouldn't let cyberpunk a situation like cyberpunk would happen so hmm. i agree yeah. with you on that front they need to fire the higher up though be fat yeah well we'll see man I, I i've been playing through uh the demo for uh, a, a cyberpunk and it crashed on me so we'll see oh, what happens uh, okay, sorry we'll, for you. I it yet. Uh, nah that? man it's, it's just so next time patch already launched right yeah it did man right now ps5 okay, okay. ps5 yeah see it's so it's so weird for me because like i said i originally played i put 167 hours into it on pc mm-hmm. and i just recently started playing it on ps5 after like the very latest patch mm-hmm. so far it's been pretty much flawless for me with the except like I had a car like do the do the typical open world thing where like it's tire slightly went through the ground but like it didn't do like a backflip or anything no crazy. it's like, way it's way better my my I, I uh game share and I was playing it when it first launched it was horrible mm-hmm. and I didn't have any issues up to that crash but I just thought it was funny because literally the PlayStation 5 if you guys got it at launch had crazy issues with games crashing like i had so many games crashing and uh i haven't literally i don't even know how many how long it's been months and months and months i've never had a game crash and then i had cyberpunk i was like oh this is funny uh anyway let's move on uh to the next topic we have some topics to get into here because i want to get you guys' take because before when i asked you about playstation plus the all new PlayStation Plus. We all didn't have a chance to experience it, right? Wooly was in Europe. He didn't get time to to experience it. You know, Caraba, everybody else. So, uh, Sony actually exceeded uh, their promise uh, with over eight hundred games in the service, right? And I I've been trying to get a good. Exam- like I've tried so many games in the service, right? I've tried the demos. I tried the Hot Wheels stuff. Like I said, Cyberpunk. I, I have Play- PlayStation Plus Premium. Um, we have the monthly games, which I'll show you guys. This folds into it as well because it's part of the conversation. Uh, I made a video and I said that PlayStation does what Xbox can't, and that means over-delivering on promises because traditionally Xbox 
they make promises and they under deliver. Okay. So it's multifaceted. So what I'm trying to say is when PlayStation starts a new service or they, you know, relaunch a combination of what they had before, they're actually over delivering. And and that's the difference between the two companies. And uh, I've talked about both because I've played both. I've had both. And you know, Xbox Game Pass, I have the opportunity to play that for free because my game share buddy, he we share and you if you have Game Pass, which he pays for, I can play all the games. And I just never turn my Xbox on uh, because it's there's not really much there. I, I played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles there, but other than that, I really haven't done much. But when it comes to this service, there's so many things that I can do and play and I'm looking at the collection in PlayStation Plus Premium, I know that not all everybody has PlayStation Plus Premium, but the games that are in there are just, I'm, I, I see myself downloading a lot of these games. And then what adds to this conversation is the fact that Xbox Games with Gold is such dog shit, and it's been dog shit for so long. And it's they don't give you an option to pick between the three tiers or whatever. It's like Game Pass is their end all be all, and then there's the the redheaded stepchild on the side, which is Xbox Games with Gold, and they're giving out this trash month after month, and it's got gotten to the point where even the diehard Xbox fans are calling for the end of Games with Gold, and that's just it's weird because you see on the PlayStation side. They have a month for Essential, which is the low tier, right? You're getting that the collection. Exactly, they got the the, the collection. The collection that we're, you know, this month we're getting Crash Bandicoot Four, um, Arcade Get, Madame Madon, uh, and Arcade Get on, or however you say it, right? Three, you could say, because with gaming it's preference, right? So there's there's got to be people out there that could say this is a shitty month. But when you compare the two services, it's just it's not comparable. Um, So we'll start off with you, Jez. Like, what do you think of the two after you've experienced both and like the directions they're they're headed and stuff like that? Well, I said before, I was like, when Sony ever decided to flip the switch, you know, they will. Microsoft has had this happen to them tons of times with music, Mm -hmm. uh, with with um, you know with with. A voice, you know, with Cortana and stuff like that. Like they always try to do things. Either like they try to join in later, or they try to do something first, and they never see it through, and they just drop it. And some or somebody comes along and does it better. And I said when when Sony flips the script and just says like, "Hey, we're gonna do it too. Like we're gonna do a subscription service. They're gonna see everything that Microsoft did, and they're gonna capitalize on it." And the addition is that they've been building up their games and their IP during this time as well. So now they could leverage those games in a service, but they've been really delivering in PlayStation plus against games of gold. And this for the last year or two, like a couple of years, it's been just so ridiculous because Sony even started not only with the PlayStation plus collection, but they also started with um, giving PS five games with, uh, that you got control, you got yep. Wreckfest, a PS5 version. You got, um, you know, uh, what was the other game? You got, uh, well, Destruction All Stars. The other game that they put in there was like the Worms game exclusive. It was a PS5. Fall, game. Fall they made Guys sure they, launched in there. Day Fall one. Guys launched, and like that, that was even before the PS5. And but when the PS5 came, they set the precedent that you can get a PS5 game and two PS4 games. And they've been doing it for the last year and a half, last couple of years since PS5 has come out. Games of Gold didn't change anything when the Series X came out or the Series consoles. They they've given you the same stuff, and now they're re giving stuff. Like last month, they had a game in there that they gave. Uh, uh, what was it? It was Braid, not Braid. It was some other Meat Boy that was given three years ago in Games of Gold. Yep. Now they just did it again. Now this month is another 360 game that they gave out years ago because remember, they stopped the backwards compatibility program. So they have not been adding new 360 games or anything or even original OG games for the last two years. Remember, they stopped it a year before the Series X came out. They stopped backwards compatibility. They said, like, we're kind of done. And then they came out with Boost or Boost. They stopped that. So they haven't really have that 360 growing to even give new games out. So they're just recycling games. But really, and I said this when Sony came out with this Essential, that $60 PlayStation Plus Essential, you get the classic, you get the collection, 
you also get these games that they're given, like Crash and stuff, per month, which are decent games that they're given. Yes, they could have down months. But that, compared to Microsoft's $60 Xbox Live, it is, it is just a double death blow to it. It really doesn't even match. The other thing is, is that there's still Xbox Game Pass. And I say this all the time on my show and, and all the time when I talk about it is that there's Xbox Game Pass for $10 a month that does not include Xbox Live. So the games that you get, like Sea of Thieves, Gears, Master Chief Collection, all those games you cannot play online. Sea of Thieves is basically dead with the basic Xbox Game Pass. You need gold which makes you say, oh, I got to get the $15 version. They've been sucking you into $15 on the console because Game Pass by itself sucks. Gold by itself sucks. You need the both of them together. Thank you, $15 a month. Now now they, they just raise the bottom price. And uh, Brad Sam said this, and a lot of Xbox podcasts didn't cover it. Brad Sam says that Microsoft wants to increase the bottom floor. He said this last month, or when PlayStation announced that, actually a few months ago, Microsoft wants to try to get $15 as the base. That's Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is basically the base that Microsoft wants. They want everybody I, I to agree with you there. 5 to 15 And that's what they want to try to do. And the way they're doing it is not by adding great games and making people just automatically go to this. They're doing it by lessening the value of each of the things by themselves that you'll be a fool to have to be why one of them by itself. You need the both of them in order to be competent. And that's the sneaky ass way, the film that's bullshit that I hate because they're they're diminishing, they're disrespecting us as gamers by making the by making these services on their end subpar. And they wanted last February wanted to charge you double for that subpar service to make it look even worse. So you upgrade. It's hard. It's the stupidest method, and I can't believe that Xbox fans or Xbox players want to accept that because they have destroyed live, and they need, you need the fifteen dollars ultimate. The best one is the PlayStation, is the uh, PC one, where with ten dollars you get, you just get the games because you have online for free. But on the console, they're screwing people, and the PlayStation Essential. That just that just makes gold look like even worse. It's goddamn fool's gold. That that shit is. Mm -hmm. Um, and a uh, what, what's your take on both services, like for the long run, for like the future and stuff? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's gonna weigh heavily on the content. I mean, like you said, um, I personally didn't get premium. I have essential still. But um, I was actually considering it, funny enough, because I thought I wouldn't get it at all until I saw it and saw what was actually available in there, um, at least specifically at the extra level and even some of the PS1 games, because I'm a huge PS1 is my favorite console of all time. Mm -hmm. um, if Sony truly capitalizes on that the way that I think they will, um, constantly updating the service with even more um, more games, more of the classics that everybody wants. Um, and, you know, uh, occasionally incorporating um, a lot of the other games that personally I didn't think were going to be in there. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that appears at the top, you know, you've got the Demon Souls and all that stuff that's in there already. Um, those are really big. Not so much for me because I, I bought them day one. Um, but like I said, there's enough in there for me to even consider a likely purchase already, which says a lot because I went from hell no to like, damn, this actually looks kind of good. And and I went through every single game uh, about three or four nights ago while I was in party chat mm -hmm. talking to someone that has premium. And I, I they just kept teasing me like, you know, you sound like you want it, you know, because <laughs> I kept finding games like, damn, I kind of want to I kind of want to play that. Damn, I kind of want to play that, too. Um so I think as long as PlayStation just keeps going forward and they just capitalize it, capitalize on it continuously, being sure to update it constantly, um, I, I think the service could go far um, because PlayStation is not using it as a way to abandon, um, you know, game sales up front the way that honestly I feel like a lot of, you know, Xbox fans have done and even uh xbox themselves have basically promoted hey why, why do that when you can just game pass you know and i also agree with what jess said you you must have the 15 
Like you, you have to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for all those people that thought they got away with it and all the stacking and all the craziness that clearly is coming to an end because yep. Microsoft is retroactively going after that now. Um, you know, all the people who thought they were stacked till 2029 and well, I could do it for three years. That's about yeah. It. Yeah, exactly. Like for the dollar or whatever, they went mm-hmm. crazy with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, the 15 is, is definitely looking like the de facto. Um, personally, I seen it, uh, cause I, I have game pass on PC. Um, which honestly, I'm just going to let it lapse because I'm struggling to even get to it right now. I, I haven't the touched it. Still, the app interaction is still bad. Yeah, yeah, it, and, and it is. It's gotten better. I'll it give them better, that. But that separate app, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the separate app thing is, is still super <laughs> janky. Um, but yeah, you need the you need the 15 one, especially for stuff like, like Gears, you know, uh, having the Ultimate Edition for Gears. Um, and all that stuff, like you don't get that without the the ultimate edition mm-hmm. um, or the uh, Game Pass Ultimate. Um, which, funny enough, by the way, I find it funny that I beat that game, and a lot of people who play on Xbox have not beat that game. Mm-hmm. For all the people that talk about Gears of War, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, what five? What, yeah, five. five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I they like love this too. so much, but I'm telling you now, they they did not play it. Yeah, but it wasn't that great. I I thought the cinematics were pretty good and the story I think was good with the capture and stuff, but Mm -hmm. I think it was like pretty lame the story. I thought the 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 choice and the end boss fight, I thought it was pretty it was pretty puff of the cost. They really didn't do anything. The semi open world was overrated. That That little sled thing was Mm. Yeah, the sled thing was weird. That that slowed me down and that's actually what took me so long to beat it. Is that God? They're trying they're trying to copy God of War. They'll start saying God of War has a sled. God of War, God of War. <laughs> keep that go. same, same animations. <laughs> hey, real, real yeah, quick before animation. we keep going, uh, mm-hmm. shout to Danelle Dan- Brown with the three months. Who are who am I trading oh, for KD? Uh, if you guys don't know, this is a basketball thing for the NBA. Suns are in the running for KD. Man, I would trade everybody except Booker. Man, honestly, but we'll see what happens because. The Nets are are in charge since he signed his deal. I'm not going to bore the gaming people about it, but just know I would give up everybody but book, okay? <laughs> um, so when it comes to the two services, before I get uh, Wooly's thoughts here real quick, mm-hmm. I, I just – I don't know if you guys know my history, but, you know, I was an Xbox guy through and through until oh, I got I fed up, you know, and it's just mm-hmm. – it's so weird because it, it's exactly what Jez is saying. It's like Microsoft is traditionally at the forefront of shit, but they're way early and they go and then, and eventually it fizzles out. Like uh, connect was a good example of that. And so many other things that they start and stop uh, windows phone or zoom, you know, what I'm zoom like all the xbox, xbox live, live dude. like xbox playstation has that pl- the share play and all that other stuff xbox has not even evolved xbox live at all with features or anything looking it's, for group was like the end it's just when when you're like in business or anything like that do you think people remember the person the first product that came out or the best you know the best, or for sure you know they don't give a, they don't care if you came out first they don't they don't care if you started it they care who's the best, and and that's the thing. It's like I see the two services, and like I said, I'm not blowing smoke up your guys' asses. I have a chance to play Xbox Game Pass whenever I want, but I don't really turn my Xbox on too much because there's not too much drawing me there. And then I see the other side in, in the vision, what Sony's doing, and it's it, there's like a, a level of brilliance going on because they're like, well... We're going to have the quality that we have with our IP. And not only that, we're going to be having monthly games that are going to draw you in. Because literally, I used to look forward to games with gold when it was actually good. Mm. Because it, it gave you an opportunity to play games and you're paying to be online anyway. And like shout out to Red Dragon and stuff. Uh, he used to do Xbox content and he talked about he was beating the drum with well, why, why do console players just accept paying for online when PC players get it for free? And everybody's like, well, the security of Xbox Live and Xbox games with gold and all this other stuff. And crossplay change that. And it's like with The mm-hmm. Wizard of Oz, it's like the guy behind the curtain. When you really find out what's really there, it's just, it's horseshit. 
it's like games with gold is not anything anymore and then it's like what does playstation do it's like they increase the value so not only they combine the services and give you options with the free games like you look at a month like the, in july you're you're going to be getting stray if you got playstation plus premium you get that day one boom um, you, you want demo, you got, want trials. We got them, you know, uh, people were talking shit about backwards compatibility. There's backwards, you know, it's not as, as big as it could be pause. Um, <laughs> but it's just, I see that same thing with the Microsoft effect where they jumped in way early with the game pass. Cause they had to, let's be honest. They used backwards uh, compatibility to fill up Game Pass because they, had they no did. They, they did. They did the same thing with backwards compatibility. Early. Yep. And now and then, a whole library. <laughs> now now they're back. they're they're backed into a corner right now, yep. fellas, because they they committed to this all or nothing proposition with Game Pass, where it's like we're gonna throw all of our shit in there day one, and it's like if could they back out of that? Could they change? I, front? I think they would rise. I, I don't know. Like, do you guys think? Do you think that they could just go back on it and say, "Well, some of our games are not going to be in their day one." You got to prove that the game's worth not. The, I don't know, man. That's a good question, but I, I think they. I think they kind of need to, like, because even. Well, sorry. Well, I, what I'm going to say is like even the shows. Like I was saying, even the show that they had was because of Game Pass. They cannot show. They're not even showing games that are not in Game Pass. The whole show is dedicated to day one Game Pass, even multi-plats. And you look at the, <laughs> the types of games that they, they, they decide to show during their E3 quote-unquote showcase, and it has to have that Game Pass on there. And it's like, look at what you're doing. You're funneling people, and you're not showing the big games. Yet Sony gets to show the Final Fantasy, the Resident Evil 4s, all the games not coming to Game Pass. And you get cornered down with a bunch of indie stuff and some like mm -hmm. Smile Gate Crossfire X crap. And that's what you got to show because you're so embedded in Game Pass. Like they're going to have to because they're never going to give those E3 shows that people always wanted to have that Sony ex clapping and shocked experience. You're not going to get that when Game Pass is the main driver of everything that they're doing because they can't show those kind of games. And I think mm -hmm. they need to. They need to balance out their shows because mm -hmm. Game Pass is just. It has that stench, as Jay Barry would say. Like, it just has that. It's getting that kind of smell, just like Games of Gold has now. Like nobody, like it's just a joke now. Like I think it's a meme. Major Nelson even still tweets it out. It's like, dude, like don't even Major bother. Major Nelson, yeah, dude, don't even bother tweeting out Games of Gold. Like just get rid of it and do something with it because it's it's a, it's it is not even it's sad, dude. That stuff well, like, I don't well, like even know that games that exist. They... That, that it's so funny you said that because one of the people I know that's one of the biggest Xbox people I follow, um, he's not a, like a zealot or anything, but he loves Xbox, regardless of the fact that apparently they don't even sell in his country. Um, so that always baffled me. Oh, damn. But, um, but yeah, uh, he actually admitted the other day that he actually forgot for several months to even download the games with gold. Cool. Do you have them on the screen? That's like, it is dude joke. i'll bring them up this it's is not even insane, like hate like dude. fanboy kind of like it's dude these are like xbox not dudes even the know Walmart that they're trash the dude they know but i've never trash. felt like as i didn't feel like essential i was abandoned as as a plate like the, the the normal playstation plus as essential mm -hmm. because premium came out like you said they just enhanced the value and they over delivered on the promise playstation always does this i just told you i had no intentions of getting that shit i was like hell no, hell no. and i seen it and i was like damn mm -hmm. damn this because my immediate thing was like oh well they're not doing day and date like uh you know game pass so you know there's, there's no way this is gonna convince me I, I got too many games and yet i found tons of games that slowly <laughs> was like hey this looks pretty good playstation mm -hmm. always manages to do this and like i said as long as they go forward and continue to increase that value exponentially like i can't argue against anything and if i had somebody coming in fresh to playstation with zero games i'd be like yo jump on this for your first year get your feet wet you know what I'm saying? Go crazy. And then, you know, then, you know, now you understand and know how to curate what you really want the way that I do. 
mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because I'm going to buy stuff first. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's the thing. PlayStation hasn't belittled the buying process with this the way that no one's but, yelling, oh, it better be in premium. You know, yep. the way that they're yelling, oh, it better be in Game Pass. And they got I, I was trials talking, too. Like, exactly. You, you got the trials. They could put their big games in there for a five hour trial, like Horizon. Exactly. And Stray, matter of fact, you said Stray is going to be there, right? A friend yeah, of mine. That's not going to be That's going to be full. That's yeah, full. full. Yep, day it's one. so much more dev friendly as well because, like Jez said, it's not trying to throw everything into the same basket. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's selective. It, it discriminates. It, it mostly um, capitalizes on the double dip approach. Mm-hmm. And for developers, that's that's extremely welcoming. When when a game has peaked in sales and devs aren't really any more making money from a product because it's already sold peak, um, then sales um, incentivize purchases um, when a game goes on sale. Uh, and 10 quid for a game does far more for a developer than... Uh, even if that game was originally 50 quid or 60 quid and now being 10 quid, that gives the developer far more than eight quid subscription service ever would, right? Mm-hmm. Um, on a, Especially when the player base and the sales base is like half, half the player base and a, a, a sixth of the sales base of competing platforms, right? Yeah. Um, whereas with with something like uh, PS Plus, what it's doing is it's it's also encouraging not just um, does PSN have have a store where games go on sale, but it's an additional payout to developers to allow their game to go onto PS Plus uh, when it's already peaked in sales, and so it's an extra bit of money for developers that otherwise they wouldn't wouldn't have got. It's not sacrificing or replacing sales and. This is where Game Pass has forced a compromise onto developers. It's a forced compromise, and it's trying to make the best of a shitty situation. Uh, but uh, and some devs, for some developers, it pays off uh, going onto Game Pass. Usually, they're well, extremely low budget devs. games, but 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 uh, and haven't had a lot of traction or a lot of um, a lot of uh, what's the word exposure. Um, but for the majority, no way is a, a, a desirable situation to basically be under the, the the concern of, well, here is a demographic of people we're making this game for who don't tend to buy games. Uh, game, games usually sell 10 to 20% what they would sell on PlayStation here on Xbox. And Xbox are trying to push us to say yes to Game Pass day one instead because our game likely won't sell very much because it's not it's not Elden Ring. You know, the world isn't ready for this game to release. Hardly anybody knows it. So what are we going to do? Uh, fine, okay, we'll go on Game Pass. But then the unknown is, well, now that you've said yes to going on to Game Pass day one, will 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 that game even sell at all now? Uh, and for, for for some it hasn't paid off at all and and that's the problem with game pass whereas with playstation plus it it's it's rare that a game will launch day one um and usually it's for a promotional thing so stray it's evidently promotional like it's to get people to subscribe to the premium tier right when it's something's promotional it, it's usually more costly. PlayStation will inevitably have splashed out quite a large amount of money to stray developers to get them to put their game day one onto PS PS Plus Premium because, or PS Plus Extra. Um, and they know that that game won't sell hardly, hardly at any, anything because it's why would it if it's going onto PS Plus? So it's not going to be a regular thing. You can't put games day one onto a subscription service unless unless you're willing to pay more than it costs to make the game. Because <laughs> otherwise, how are they going to make a profit, especially if it's an exclusive? It's just stupid. So, you know, I, I, do, I do see PS Plus being the superior service because it incentivizes double dipping. It facilitates... Uh, sales rather than compromises sales 
it, and it, it's selective. It's uh, strategic. It's, uh, it's not one shoe fits all, um, like Game Pass is trying to be. So, mm-hmm. and I think I think you said it, it. It's not looking to replace the sales is the key because that's the thing I asked my friend immediately, who she was heavily anticipating Stray, and even before the announcement, she was looking to get it. And I, my first question to her was like, well, yeah, premium right now. Are you going to just play it via the... She said, no, she didn't buy it. She yeah, wants to it own people. it because that's the mentality we have on the PlayStation platform. You know, as gamers, we want to own these things. We want them permanently in our collection. We don't want to be on, you know, a mm-hmm. time trial. We don't want to be, you know, when you've decided. And this is a big thing. And I tell people all the time, it's okay if you don't know. A lot of people, a lot of people look at the way that I game or, you know, some of the people I'm really cool with that also know, really, really know what we like in games. Like, I don't have to doubt going to the store tomorrow to pre-order Live a Live and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm going to love those games because I know those are the games that I love. Those are the games that I play, right? Like, I don't have to doubt that. And everybody doesn't know themselves intrinsically like that. So they got to try a bunch of stuff. And that's okay, too. But when you get to a certain point, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be on a time limit. Like Octopath Traveler right now, right, on on uh, Game Pass. I don't know when that's going to leave. But it doesn't matter to me because I own the game. You see what I'm saying? But I, I, I need to yeah. get back to it. But I have so many games that I play. And all you guys are in the same predicament as me. We all have tons of games to play and to get through. But we, ha- we know we don't have that time limit of like, oh, man, it might come out of the service. Like, like Yakuza. The amount of people I've seen panicking when Yakuza got pulled out of Game Pass uh, and begging for it to go back in. Some of them were like, oh, I love that game. Can you guys bring it back? And I'm like, wait a minute. This is so confusing Facts. to me. You just told me you love the game. And um, are, why wouldn't you purchase it now? And they're begging for it to come back to the service because well, that's what it's, it. it started you to make. Exactly. They're relying oh, on it. They're there was someone in the chat who was saying to me, Wooly, will you buy Stray? It's one of these salty oh. uh, bots, right? I can't remember who it was. Mm-hmm. But I, you you got you to gotta realize something, matey. Nobody... Uh, nobody is was asking for stray to be day one on ps premium nope. or, or ps extra whatever it whichever one it is nobody nobody part of the ps community are, are demanding games day one or same with deliver us the moon now those two games coming for to ps ps extra or ps premium it's evidently promotional. Like I, I, I keep saying this, but you gotta appreciate it. it's no different to Yakuza Like a Dragon game day, day one on Game Pass. They had to put like something there um, because they were releasing consoles with no actual uh, exclusives. So uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon was a hefty payout. Inevitably, it was a hefty payout, far more than the usual day one on game pass and deliver us the moon um you know it's a lower budget indie game uh, evidently maybe they received a payout that was actually taking them into into profit into profits rather it was covering development costs and uh, made them profit who who knows um what i do know is I, I, they're not really my type of games. Stray, Stray looks solid, uh, and I will inevitably end up buying that game when it's on sale. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never asked for it to be day one. Uh, I never, because day one, my, my ethos is day one on subscription services doesn't really work unless it's promotional, which is where a, a promotional title is always receiving more more money. Uh, from the pot, um, and, you know, and that's what you, yeah. that's what you got to remember. Stray and uh, that's and deliver us the moon. It's not going to be the norm. But game, game, PS agree. Premium and PS Extra isn't going to be re- a con- continuous stream of day one releases. Uh, Sony on has game done Pass. day one games in the service. Like the, they had Destruction All Stars. They did mm-hmm. that Worms game coming. They did PS the Warrior, Plus. the Warriors did, game too. Warrior, yeah, Shadow Shad- Warrior Shad- Three. Yeah, 
They did. Um, I was on PS they Now. Did even PS uh, now. Virtual Fight of Five on PS <laughs> Now. Virtual Fight of Five, the re, the 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 remake or whatever will help PS4 version of it. Like Sony is going to put games in a service. They're going to put games on PC day one. They're going to do things. They're just not putting everything there, and they're not forcing every game to be a certain way because they want to mm. funnel everybody down the subscription game pass route that's mm -hmm. always been my point is that sony is not funneling you they're not <laughs> forcing you with one service and another service and saying hey if you get live by yourself you can get these shit games you get game pass by yourself you're not going to be able to play online and you're going to get a whole bunch of games that you can't use the online features to them so you got to put those two together and <clears throat> because we want you to Fox. go down one path Sony's not making you go down one path. So if Sony puts a game in goddamn PS Now Plus, whatever the hell they're going to do, they're going to do it. That's not the end of the world. The point is, is that Microsoft is, is funneling people. and They'll say, I'm not forced. You're not forced. They're making you seem like you have options, but you really have. You really you're don't. You're between a rock and a hard place, dude. Like, they're it not is, really is. smart options. So they're, they're this game options. won't sell or, or we say yes well, to but Game Pass the Day other One. Point <laughs> it's like... I wanted to make too <laughs> yeah, is, go ahead, is just... the thing that people didn't talk about is that that game, those demos that Microsoft is going to put in Game Pass, Game Pass demos, right? They are paying the Super devs Cat to make receive. a demo to a game before it releases to see if it gets traction and then they're going to decide whether to put it in Game Pass or not. So it goes along the lines when Phil had that interview back at GDC with Sarah Bond, you know, those rehearsed things where I often get asked by developers, if I'm not in Game Pass, am I even viable on the Xbox? Because if people are not going to buy it, if I'm not in Game Pass, right? I often get asked that and I tell them, no, you're fine. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, they announced these Game Pass demos <clears throat> and they are now having devs, they're paying devs to put games pre-demos in Game Pass before they release. And that's the reason why is because they're making them, just like what Wooly was saying, test out the waters to see. Instead of putting my full game there day one and crossing my fingers and saying, I think it's going to do well, they're going to put a, a demo in there of a slice of the game, a paid a demo that they're getting paid to do, to put it in there to get feedback, to determine almost like pre-launch demos you're going to get. And you're going to give feedback and they're paying the devs to make these and they're going to see if the game picks up heat in, in Game Pass. Maybe the dev now goes, hey, I'm going to launch my game in Game Pass. If it doesn't, they it's don't have so to do messy, it. Bro. It's, it's, it's so because messy, bro. It's because they need that traffic to Game Pass because if Game Pass was such a great service and people were making money left and right, developers would naturally just be putting their stuff in Game Pass. Publishers as well. They're not. That's why Microsoft has to buy the publishers. That's why Microsoft has to pay for them to make demos for the service to see how those games do. These are not demos or trials of AAA games or games that are released. These are pre-demos to get the developer, and they're paying the devs. And they did the same thing with the Windows Store. The Windows App Store for Windows Phone, nobody was putting their apps on there. They paid devs to put their apps in their store they're doing the same thing with game pass that doesn't mean that this service is kicking off and doing great they're 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 on life support right now they're they are fit they're, they're desperate 70 billion dollars buy a publisher we need shit in this service because we made our bed and we can't sleep in it and that's the reality of it these are not indications that this service is being successful like you said it's been out for five, seven years it's 2017 this is, didn't just show up on in January. This service has been around. So, so real, these real quick, is doing well. Shout out to John Baptiste uh, with the twenty dollars. They won't buy games like Crossfire X, which costs less than forty dollars, but will go out and buy X, every Xbox controller out there. Yeah, man, I, I heard they went through actual Xbox controller shortages. I don't know if they were just kind of blowing smoke up people's asses, but I would really, I want to comment on one of these stigmas out Me there. Too. All right, and I'll let you hop in. Um, all right, so I really have a interesting question for all you guys because it seems like PlayStation gamers are held to the standard where they can't enjoy games or play them to their fullest without buying them. So is that the is that the is that the take here? Because that's a strange take indeed. Because 
I don't understand because I've heard I've heard people actually try to defend themselves like, oh, I'm going to play Stray and PS Plus Premium, but then I'm going to go out and buy it. Like, how does that fucking uh. make sense? Trust me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a cheap bastard, and I'll tell you guys that in, in my videos. It makes no fucking sense unless you're supposed to you're trying to add to your library uh, and it's a digital library. Whatever you want to do, that's fine. But like it's so strange to me that you got to like defend yourself uh, on the PlayStation side. So like if I'm playing Shadow Warrior 3 in PlayStation Plus Premium, uh, it was dropped in their day one. I have to go out and buy the game to justify myself supporting developers that doesn't make any fucking shit. I'm not, I'm not no so guy. have you guys seen that have you guys seen that yeah, yeah. I'm not the only one yeah right? like I know I know I'm not some okay. Like okay. I'm not okay. donating okay if your game doesn't look worth the purchase for me and that's your job to sell the game to me and that's the problem because like you look at these games like God of War and stuff like you're gonna what? sit there going I'm just gonna wait for it to come to a there, there's a you're gonna want to buy it there's a difference what because name? so what what I'm gonna tell you is it doesn't make sense for big triple a publishers on either side to drop their shit in day one okay they've said that multiple times so if you get a shadow warrior 3 that's not a fucking gta 6 uh that's not a battlefield day one or that's you know what i'm saying like the reason why xbox has to buy at, at publishers outright is because from a business perspective you won't get the premium shit the triple a shit okay Duty straight Stray is not a triple A game. Uh, it will never be in Game Pass, dude. It's like, it's just okay, it so is what it is. Go ahead, go ahead. I want to say something. Um, when it comes to if we if we had if I have heard a certain thing, that, yeah, okay. like what's his name? Uh, um, uh, Gaming Despair is yes. someone that would do it, and he's proud about it. He wants to support the developers. So you don't, all right, so you don't think yeah. the developers are getting money when they cut a deal with PlayStation to drop a game in day and date? At the end of the day, I think clearly, the developers clearly, won't. Clearly, on, they're not. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, we'll you, go you after go you. Okay. okay, then we, we've seen it how uh, developers get fucked over, not by PlayStation, but more like by the service themselves. Look mm. at. Uh, the game uh, Oddworld. The developers. No, did, did they have uh, a gun? Did they have a gun to their head cutting that contract? Correctly? No, but but that's what I'm t I literally so said. That's, it's I not mean, PlayStation fault. I literally said it. It's but you don't need to take fault. the burden on your back as a gamer or a consumer to say, I can't enjoy this game unless I buy it twice. It doesn't make That's sense. That's like saying I got to play the collector's edition in order to enjoy the game. I got to give yeah. them $120 for their robot mm. car. So I'm like, it's I just think a, it's, it's a, a matter of thing. if you enjoy the I game. Know, and yeah, I don't follow that bullshit. It's a I matter mean, of you, if you enjoy the game and you got the money, you're going to support them because you want a sequel. I never saw the buying games as supporting devs, though. See, that's the thing. Like, The thing is, I'm a customer. If you don't market this game, if you make this game and you show this game, if I'm not interested, I'm not interested. But if you don't do your due diligence and try, like, see, wait, just like I was saying, the problem that Microsoft has is that they don't show their games well. They don't do deep dives. They don't get you excited about their games. It's the Cobras. It's the, the Leakers, the Jez Cordons, Bootleg Jez, all this other stuff that they try to, to use them as a way to get people excited with fake kind of leaks and stuff. Sony breaks down their games and gets you excited. Returnal, nobody was like, what's this? They showed the combat. They showed, they break it down. Horizon, they show you that there's levels to it with the, the combat, with the tribes, with the story, mm -hmm. with the elements, and they get you excited. I remember, I said this on my last show this week, Days Gone. I was like another zombie game. I wasn't too hot into it. But then Game Informer did a deep dive in it that Sony let them play for three hours. And he broke down the game. And I was like, oh, damn, this seems pretty damn cool. That's the how you market your game, especially if you're trying to sell it. That's the issue. Microsoft's not trying to sell their games. They're just using their games as just like cushion for Game Pass. They want that subscription rather than you buying the game. And they're they not in it to up, market that game. And you that. see it. Look at Gears. Gears wasn't Gears 5 is coming out. It was like get Gears and Game Pass. And yeah. it's shifting. That's all that's all that, I remember, honestly. Yeah, it was get Gears and Game Pass. This. And Sony get and if a developer 
show if they know how to properly market a game to get a purchase, that's how I feel I'll give the money. If I'm excited about the game, if they do a good job in doing that stuff. But I, if I'm not interested in a game and I'm like, well, it's a dev that I like, I'm just going to buy it because, you know, donations. Just write a check and send it to their corporate address, like, if that's what you want to do with your money. Mm -hmm. But I don't look at it as this is a donation. I'm a customer. I spent money in a product, and I want content for the product that I purchased. If you cannot sell it to me, then I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's it's worth less. That's that's how I look at it. I'm not the, no donating here. You the, donate to me. The Xbox is is put a that stink on these concepts, and yeah. and that that's another one of those. It's like where people see the extremes of what happens, and it's true. But Xbox Game Pass is a totally different animal as opposed to PlayStation desi deciding to cut a deal with Fall Guys and put it in there or Rocket League. Stray or Rocket League or any of these games. It's completely different than Game Pass and the way they do things. And that's why I see on the PlayStation side, I've always thought this in my head. It's the same thing with cross-gen. We saw the cross-gen idea and holding back and all this other stuff. It was this big narrative at the beginning of the generation. And, and guess who fucked it up for everybody? Halo because of yep. Craig. And and, yep. and then guess what? PlayStation comes out with all these cross gens that Horizon. blow all, blow all, blow <laughs> all these <laughs> blow all these even next gen only games out the water. And, and then it comes down to dev talent, and it's just like, yes, Xbox screws it up for a lot of different narratives. But it's like we don't need to fall in these dumb traps to think that we need to do go the extra mile for but, to support. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do that, that's fine. But I, I think it's just like people overcompensating to say, I'm not an Xbox gamer. I'm not going to play a game in a service because and just do that because I don't support the developers that's not it's just it's a flawed concept and i i just had to say my piece what what you know? uh, what playstation did better than xbox is basically know which game to keep to cross gen and which game to move it to next gen mm -hmm. like for example ratchet they moved it to next gen imagine if we needed to play ratchet uh on playstation 4 like now nah, dude mm -hmm. That game would have been a totally different experience. Like, um, I'm, I don't know if you heard of it, but uh, I spoke with Kalel, and you know mm -hmm. Kalel, right? Um, yep. He literally spoke with Bill Spencer and other people back then, and the idea of what Halo they wanted it to be is totally different from what they delivered on it. Mm. And that's how it should have been. Halo. Like Halo, you were supposed to fly to different uh, planets and stuff like that. And the idea, the concept for it was amazing. But it got held back by the tech, by the uh, system. But here is what Microsoft did wrong. Instead of, of biting the bullet and just focus on the next gen, no. They wanted all gen why do we talk about the disaster that cyberpunk but we never say the disaster that halo halo yeah, infinite yeah, some people what the hell out of here? halo infinite is is literally the same exact same story with cyberpunk the, th the thing the is I'll, I'll let you go woolly the the difference is so it's a continuing thing PlayStation is taking the right approach where Xbox took the wrong approach. PC releases. How is PlayStation doing that? Well, we saw good examples of how they're porting over their titles years <coughs> later. So they put value still in their console. That's one aspect. The day and date thing is another aspect. You can list all these things off. Options for their subservice. Um, the list goes on and on. OK, so it's just the way the product and the way they approach things is the correct way. Right. It's the the more sustainable way, I think, is the, the, is the term. compromising way. Yeah, yeah. Microsoft has to compromise everything yeah. because of what they promised. What were you going to say? Um, I was going to say, you know, you've had the Xbox apologists continuing to just spew 
whatever shit they can to keep people ticking over. But everything that they've been spewing for years has just been flip has has only ever gone come back to bite them. I mean, look at Andrea Piccini. Nee, 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 nee. Andrea mm. Piccini. Nee, nee. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how many ninnies there are in the name, but anyway, ninny, Anyway, like Andrea Piccini ninny says, mm-hmm. um, you know, once again, which console has no next gen exclusives in 2022? And she said this like a while back with a screenshot of um, Redfall, Forza Motorsport, and Starfield. Right next gen only next gen only next gen only like and then she showed a contrast a stark horrible poor pitiful contrast of horizon mm. forbidden west gran turismo 7 and god of war ragnarok not next gen not next gen not next gen so semantics is what you have and not only that but this didn't age well at all because all this shit is coming out next year not this year that she was that she was using um but what about redfall looks next gen to you what about forza motorsport looks actually next gen the car models are really low quality they they they're, they're the same play. quality as, as engine. motorsport 7 uh, yeah, they had to use a flipping pc and how it is in game 4k when engine. it was in replay engine. mode exactly and then so what about starfield what about starfield actually looks next gen and now, to me, to me, like it would be a reach to say that they're on par with cross-gen Sony first-party games, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, God of War Ragnarok around the corner. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> don't don't use flipping semantics to like think that this is exact what you what what's a priority for for you as a gamer. Uh, you know, for game the games, the quality of the game, the experience of the game is what's important. And and then you've got like other apologists like MLD, MLD Ghost on Twitter. Oh God, what was it? Okay. What was it? He said Halo Infinite will continue to get content and updates well into 2022. Oh, shit. Its relevance, <laughs> its relevance will outlast anything PlayStation Bro. puts out next year easily. I got something for you. It's one thing. It's one thing to make a great game. It's another to make a great game that lasts. Only Xbox can do both now. <laughs> Like, I mean, there is, there's a video that I, I forwarded to the group mm. chat and it, it's, it's embarrassing. All of these terribly kind of anti PlayStation pro Xbox tweets are all wrong. They've, they've all failed to materialize and completely come back to bite them in the ass. And it just, it baffles my head how people would rather focus on oh is it technically next gen only or is it cross gen like that that's a factor to consider look at flipping arkham Goth- gotham knights that's next gen only that's current gen only that's not a cross gen title and yet look how poor it it, it doesn't looks, look how good. mediocre it is so don't mm. it's not about whether it your game's cross gen or current gen only that that dictates its quality it's about the quality don't Max. tell me that it's the the title is more important than the quality. Like so, what dictates well, it. Well, like part of the thing that you're saying, right, is the perfect example I always give people for this. You know, when they say, "Wait, wait, what's going on at Xbox?" Where they seem to have trouble producing these games while PlayStation just keeps kicking them out, right? Mm-hmm. And I tell people it's not just the purchase talent because n- none of these people are walking in the studio and they're terrible, right? But there's a certain thing you got to do when you gel a team together, right? Everybody, everybody on the 96 Bulls was not Michael Jordan, right? There was Scottie Pippen and all the other people that played their position, right? In order to make that team the 96 Bulls, right? So one of the perfect examples of a team that should have slaughtered everything they they walked across, right? And I can't can't remember which year it was, but it was... um, for the first time in history, the uh, the American Olympic team for basketball lost when we had one of the most dominant teams ever. Like half the damn NBA was in that team. And we lost because they took it as a joke. And they, they just thought they were going to run over everybody. 
and I think it was Spain that we lost to, and we ran in there and we got whooped. But we had everybody. We had the LeBrons. We had the KDs. We had we had everybody. So you can't just purchase or bring all these people onto a team and expect them to act like a team. You see what I'm saying? You got all these great individual players. So like when, when they were laughing, they're like, ooh, look at all these people they poached, you know, from Santa Monica or this, that, and the third. If you can't manage these teams and help them, you know, coordinate a cohesive effort to actually become a team to produce something well, like this is the thing, this is the missing factor, right? That mystery factor of why can Sony keep doing this? Why can they bring a new studio in and help them gel? Not a single studio has, has PlayStation acquired and not made them better when they came into the fold because they're bringing them on to more things. They're, that they're, they're gaining that competitive edge even further. They're like, they said, their only competition is themselves. Every time you see it, the studios, Gorilla, we want to go up the next level because, damn, look what Naughty Dog did. Look what Insomniac did. Look what Sucker Punch did. They, they're, they're going against each other, you know? And it, it, it's, it's just something that gets cultivated internally that uh, that they're missing. Yeah, we all hope they get it, you know, because we're all ultimately gamers at the end of the day. Um, and also, the one other thing to answer your question, uh, Saltius, um, the... The thing about the purchasing thing that you were asking earlier, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that we feel that we need to specifically purchase it. I just think it's just that um, a lot of us are more sure about games that we want mm-hmm. in our collection permanently. So not that they wouldn't, because that same friend I told you that's going to purchase Stray also tried Shadow Warrior while she had um while she has the the premium. So she still tried something in there. Um, you know, so it's not, it's not about the particular double purchasing. I just think a lot more people are sure about their purchases there. And it shows because, um, one thing someone asked the other day, cause the Mega Man NT, uh, got announced and the one platform it's not on is Xbox. And a lot of people don't remember this. And I was, I'm looking, I'm looking for the article cause I know I've seen it, but I remember the, the overall sales, um, for Capcom reporting at one point was like, 12% or less was Xbox, right? Yep. And then people ask, why was this game, th- why is that the only platform that's got skipped? It's on PC, it's on it's on PlayStation, it's on Switch, literally everything, right? And they go, why is it not on Xbox? And it's like, well, if, if Xbox counted for 12% of less, 12% or less of sales on high, like high profile games, right? What mm-hmm. makes you think they're going to count enough sales wise on a game that is niche for me to be worth, or for, you know, in this case for Capcom to um, be worth the resources to develop Mega Man NT um, for five Xbox platforms. Why, why, why make the investment in time, money, and, you know, uh, manpower to bring this game to those consoles when it's not going to sell? Because the first thing they're going to ask you is guess what? Is it in Game Game Pass? Pass. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why it's not coming. They keep Mm -hmm. asking, and that's why it's not coming. Well, to 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 double down on that, shout out to Jeff Grubb. He put a he put a poll out there. He said, Will uh, Xbox getting Kojima help with other Japanese developers or something? And then it was totally one sided to the yes. Because this is like Xbox gamers. And the fact is, is it's no. Because Xbox isn't buying Japanese stuff, right? And the the, the fact, True Witty with the $2 here says, he's talking about Halo with the MC, Master Chief Collection getting microtransactions and stuff like that. Like, that just adds to it. it I put stuff on the, on the screen to try to say, well, is Halo going to be savable or... Is Xbox Game Pass profitable? It's just like all these questions start piling up, Who's and the it's one that just be answering them. You know, it, who's the one that should be answering those? Jeff Grubb, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. They're the they, ones. Xbox. They, Phil Spencer talks a lot. It's not like he is a mute. He talks a lot out of his ass, even as mm-hmm. a right hand ass. And they don't. They, they could easily tell you, but they show you some bullshit numbers. They they make it look like that's doing fine. They're <clears> the ones that should be marketing their stuff, and instead they use like. They 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 uh, depend on these ambassadors and all this other stuff to kind of, you know, talk to the gamers because you know we don't want to share what really is going on. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I said like the indications here is not really there. Like 
Kojima, uh, what Don Matrick used to tout out Kojima on stage. They brought Metal Gear Solid to Metal Gear Solid 5 that. to Xbox. And remember, Kojima's on stage. It was like he would just come out and go, It's coming to Xbox. And then, like, uh, Don Matrick would just stand next to him and just like clap at him and stuff like mm. that. And and then they even brought Final Fantasy 13 on Xbox. I remember that was a one more announcement. Mm -hmm. That was huge for the Xbox. It was the first time a Final Fantasy game was going to launch day and date on an Xbox. Final Fantasy 13. And now we're we're back to where Final Fantasy doesn't even go on Xbox anymore. And Jez, so, what was it? What was it? Phil Spencer called um, Persona uh, series being ported over uh, in a collection a, a partnership. The a product of a part <laughs> of a very special my ass. partnership. They went everywhere. Yeah, I know. A very, a oh, very special so partnership. Yeah. It, 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 it's like that. That is what it, it's become now. Like you, yeah. this is literally it a partnership. I, I, it, it was literally a, a multi plat port that that's exactly. happening on that's on partnership. every platform. Exactly. So uh, it's Same like it, person, it's yeah, become, persona. It's yeah, become crazy. And and it's come back to buy Xbox in the in the arse, right? Because you've got this like exactly what you were saying, Jez, about how um, when a when a developer has to make the choice between going through the all the time and effort to create a port of a game or a version of uh, an Xbox version of a game for it to only uh, have the prospects at best of sixteen or eighteen percent um uh, the, what playstation sales are then the, then 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 it, it presents the 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 question well a, a payout a game pass payout is is that the is that worth it because it would have to be profitable for it to be worth it for us and if it's not going to sell because the demographic who would otherwise buy it but it wouldn't even be great even if they did it would only be like 16 percent playstation sales well if that demographic are also demanding that it comes to game pass then well how we we want we want to make money from this we don't want it to barely break us even mm -hmm. and and so then the onus then comes to becomes on x happens to, i don't can't say my words properly then the onus is on xbox because they've got to fork out the dough they got to fork out the cash yeah. to make it worth worth the devs' while, but they can't do that for every game. It's not monetarily feasible. And you might say, "Well, Xbox are rich, or their capital, Microsoft's capital is huge. Capital is not the same as profitable. Uh, it's it's not the same thing. To have a shit ton of capital it is it is to make money uh, and it grow, right?" You can't make money if you're burning more money for uh, into a product than that product is making back. And if uh, uh, Xbox have to fork out all this money to get all these games onto Xbox because they're not selling, and the demographic of who would otherwise have bought the game are now demanding it go to Game Pass Day One, well, then they're going to. That's not going to be. Uh, something they can do for every game because it it will it will just burn through shit tons of money that they're never going to make back from the service. So then the question is, well, what games do they do that for? And that's yeah. why you're going to see more and more games not come to Xbox at all, mm -hmm. and and rather um, Xbox are then going to be under pressure from. And we've seen it on Twitter. We've seen Xbox fanboys going, why haven't you uh, got this game onto Game Pass? Why haven't we had this game being ported over? What, what about this game? What about that game? Uh, Microsoft sort yeah. it out. And it, it's because Microsoft are now, their hands are tied and they're in a situation where, well, we, if we can't pay all these third-party publishers and third-party developers a shit ton of money for them to profit from putting their game to game past day one for Once us, again. then 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 we're going to either have to be extremely selective and limited yeah. in when we do that and how often we do that in frequency for it to for us to be able to recoup the cost back. But also are we not better off just buying the publisher instead? So then then we not having to pay that amount out all the time. Well they can't buy every publisher. 
Yeah, exactly. But they can't buy every freaking publisher. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And so it's going to get to this extremely uncomfortable point where it's already reaching a ceiling. And, and this is why Game Pass is going to stagnate. It's not going to, it's not a sustainable business model. Uh, whereas PS Plus, it discriminates, it, it, it's selective, and it tends to be double dip. It's not, it's, it's very much the exception to the rule. That is day and day. So it's, f- these are games that are already on PlayStation. They're not being bought to be ported to PlayStation for it to land day one on the subscription service. It's low cost on PlayStation's part. It's profitable on developers part because it tends to be double dipping and it's just, it makes far more sense. So yeah. All right. Well, we, I mean, I have a question. Oh, we got, we got to move on because we got, we got a, a topic that's the main title, and if we don't get over it, go over Uh-oh. it, it's going to be uh, clickbait, right? So we got to talk Uh-oh. about it. Hey, real quick, just as a joke, we're not going to really k- go in depth here, all right? Um, teabagging oh. is sexual assault now, oh, so just to let you know, no. if you don't want to go that to jail is- oh. in real life, <laughs> don't teabag anyone, okay? Um, anyway. <laughs> We're going to move on. Uh, let's talk about God of War because that's the main topic of the night. Um, we're going to give a little background for you guys. You guys remember when God of War was first announced? It, uh, God of War Ragnarok? A um, long time ago, okay? Uh, 2020, right? The, yeah, 2020, there was a teaser. Kratos, there wasn't a video. It was just his voice in the background, and it said God of, Ra- oh. God of War, Ragnarok, um, and I lost my shit, right? I'm a big God of War fan. Loved uh, 2018, man. It, it was my favorite game of all time until Elden Ring came out. And long story short, they had some delays because of COVID, because of the main actor having back problems, had to have back surgery, and some other things. So it's been a while, all right? So the fan base has been very... Uh, I don't know. How would you guys describe it? They're at their wits end with the situation <laughs> because the you know there's been multiple stories. There was that random um, I, I don't know. It was like some gaming website out of Spain that said it was going to be delayed into 2023. David Jaffe said he'd wear a MAGA hat uh, that he thought it was going to be delayed into 2023, and he'd, he'd wear a MAGA hat if it comes out in 2022. So there's all these articles that were are pinballing people back and forth. Is it going to be delayed? Is it not going to be delayed? Then Corey Barlog <laughs> comes out, um, and he's going back and forth with fans, and we'll get into that. And then we have the snitch who's batting a 1,000 with his predictions. Like his first thing that he ever came out with and I'll show you guys this account. I've talked about him. He's a national treasure right now. Um, this guy comes out, and he, he basically has the state of play verbatim. He puts it out. Nobody knows who he is because he's a random account. He gets it line for line, bar for bar, dude. Like This guy gets it 100% correct, and then he follows it up with more predictions, Final Fantasy predictions that are 100%. And all of a sudden, he comes out with this gif with... What is this shit, that, this code that he has in Binary. there? What is it called? Binary. And then people get it for the date is the 30th, right? Which is the third, uh, which is today. And you got fake insiders like Roberto Serrano saying, trying to put out dates when PlayStation is going to do their little announcement for the state of play. And it never happens. So people lose their shit. They're like, well, it's going to get delayed again, right? And it's just been this narrative back and forth. And all of a sudden, you got people sending dick pics to the developers for release dates, right? There's all kinds of weird shit going on. And the fan base is clearly chomping at the bit to get news. And then we got Tom Henderson coming out and basically announcing the special, the collector's edition, all the details, okay? So they had... They had the intentions of announcing this thing, okay? But they pulled back. And I think it was the because snitch. The snitch, the snitch yeah. released that information. They got spooked for whatever reason. 
the information's out there and more stuff has come out that the stitch has access to unlisted links to YouTube. This dude, I don't know who he is, but it's crazy the shit that he has. Oh, mm -hmm. So, so he has down. he has links to unlisted so he's got to be I mean it's not just Sony because he had the pack he had the Pac-Man announcement, he had the Final yeah. Fantasy shit. He has all kinds of stuff and Sony is like locked down tight when it yep. comes to any of these leaks. They find people on like Reset Terra or Reddit or any of the people that are leaking this shit and eventually I don't know if they use the FBI or whoever they use, they shut them down. Okay? So that's mm -hmm. it's just uh Tom, well, what noise we saw yeah, so, what's up um, go, go, go ahead let's let's do um woolly first and then caraba and then we'll go from there so this guy i'm gonna read you this quote this comment from mm -hmm. somebody who was having hashing it out with Corey. he put mm -hmm. why won't you all just go on and tell us that yeah. ragnarok is delayed so that we can move on and plan the rest of the year seriously this is getting frustrating He's mm -hmm. got a Halo fucking free avatar and an Xbox only centric uh, banner. His whole feed is Xbox, 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 Xbox. All these guys who were trolling and sending shit to to uh, Corey and and the team. Mm -hmm. So many of them are Xbox fans, are Xbox fanboys. It's fake concern uh, and. You know, I, I tweet. I made a tweet to Corey, uh, mm. and I just basically said, uh, you know, Corey Barlog. He actually liked the comment, which I thought was quite funny, because I said to him, Corey Barlog, I would like to apologize for all the fecal filiac fuck nuggets who forget that they are just consumers, not developers. Don't let their rude ass entitlement complex get to you. What you, Eric Williams, and the team are making will be incredible. So thank you. And he liked that comment. Um, but for, for real, like I'm a lot of the abuse is from people with flipping Master Chief as their avatar and shit. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's a bunch of fake accounts. It's all yeah. fake concern. Exactly. Um, you know, just let, when it comes out, it, it when it when it's announced, it's announced. But he did actively deny that it's been delayed. Because in response to that twonk, Corey Barlog replied, because it's not as in it's not delayed. So he said it himself, it's not it's not delayed. It's be delayed, dude. I haven't been um, thinking now it's gonna do November, man. Because everything's November eleventh. Oh yeah, bro, because Call be of Duty's not even in November savage. anymore now. That's October. Mm -hmm. So everything kind of moved out of November for some reason. Hogwarts. So, anyway. yeah. Get it there. So, here's the thing with this one. Um this is uh Sakarato Persona. Uh, I was on his show. Mm -hmm. And one of his guests said something very interesting. <coughs> so if this is truly uh, a, U an, a YouTube uh, worker doing this, getting uh, unreleased uh, YouTube videos, watching them, and then leaking it, mm -hmm. like PlayStation was to them. For sure. Not not only PlayStation, other companies, because that literally breach of com of contract. Yep. Not on. Not only that. That uh, that should be fixed very quick. Because you thought he should uh, know that. Oh no, maybe no, you don't. I know that uh, if uh, I worked uh, at Kalel, uh, uh, what called website, uh, uh, Tech Gaming. And when you log in, you can know who was the last person that logged in and corrected something or did something with an article. So if the gaming has something like that, I can't, I cannot imagine YouTube not have something as uh, equal to it. And other than that, um, PlayStation not releasing the new the information this week. It's because of the it's because of the snitch. They don't want to play ball games with them. Yep. They want to teach him a lesson or her a lesson, and they're gonna be stubborn about it. I would hope they release the information next week, but we will see. 
do you think? And why do you are think, releases over the holiday weekend too? I mean, I'm just saying. Do you think that they've been dragging the the player base on too long? I mean, I'm gonna tell you what it is, salty. And go ahead. Lie. People are not gonna like it. It's because Summer Games Fest, Xbox Showcase, it all sucked ass, and people yeah. are hungry for games, and it's ridiculous. And, and people don't think this is a fanboy, but like you want to know what that image that you showed last week where Sony's holding up the gaming industry, goddamn mm -hmm. Jeff Keighley, depending on Last of Us remake as his humdinger one more thing, you know, True. Sony showcase showing Resident Evil 4, showing VR, showing this stuff, showing Final Fantasy coming to PlayStation 5. Like the big announcements are only that kind of stuff, but everything was just so bad. And and I don't even think those were like huge. Like, it, like the biggest thing for Game Pass was Turtles. Like I think that that whole E3 kind of feel sucked. Like, and I think people would just have this black hole. The other thing is, is that a lot of the stuff wasn't for this year. Nobody used the time of this E3, this games, this this fest or whatever like that to show gameplay mm -hmm. to get people excited about what's coming this holiday. It was all no dates. 2023 the first fiscal year and not nobody was like hey what am i gonna play this holiday besides goddamn madden and call of duty you didn't even break down hogwarts there wasn't even a good showing of the games that we know that are coming so i think that black hole of gaming this whole e3 faux jeff Keighley smuggling grapes show mm -hmm. it didn't deliver and people are like well, if God of War is coming out this year, I need to know what's the big holiday game this year because right now there's nothing. Are we just going to cruise on Madden, Call of Duty, and, you know, hopefully Hogwarts shows well, like or Batman, the sidekick game? I, I don't, yeah. like, and that's the thing. And I think if people want to know if, if God of War comes out. And to be honest, for Sony, what they already released this year, to them, they could rest on their laurels. I don't they want could. them to, mm -hmm. but they could. Because they kind of already front loaded this year, and they even have Last of Us and Forspoken still coming out. Even Forspoken wasn't even a big showcase. They, nobody showcased the games coming for the holiday. And I think that was a whole misstep on this whole E3 Keeley thing. Like, Keeley was looking for the world premieres and not talking about what am I going to play the, in the next coming months and show me gameplay. Don't just show me world premieres for games that are coming three years from now, next year, sometime in development. Like, Callisto Protocol, I guess, did well. That Maybe Complete, that's one. To that, you know? to that, Callisto Protocol is more of a... I would say it's niche, but it's a horror game. You know, not everybody's going to buy that. that. that I am, too. I am, too, but... I, I Exactly what you're saying is a lot of the bigger games, the big hitters towards the end of the year, are 2023, you know? so a Majority of it majority yeah. uh so yeah it's exactly what you're saying and like to to have the leaks to the level like i brought it up on screen where they you know he can detail what the collector's edition is That's uh crazy. the exact edition that means that people have access to all this information so i'm just i'm i'm on it like i get the the whole thing with the snitch you know beating you to the the, the punch and stuff like that but i'm just there's got to be a reason why Sony is 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 hesitant to drop a to re, to do a release date, just like you're saying, because Xbox isn't pushing them. Mm -mm. Xbox moved out of 2022, so it's like there's no competition at the end of the yeah. year. They can still sell with what they have, in honestly, because we've seen that with Miles Morales and. All these other games charting like Horizon Forbidden West oh, well, with the bundles, oh, right? Yeah, it's gonna, it was, yeah, it exactly. They could they could release God of War, July. Uh, any any pick a month, uh, exactly. March, April, May, June, July. It doesn't matter. It's gonna sell, right? So mm -hmm. that's where I'm. I'm just like, dude, Sony, don't, because I want to play this as soon as I can, right? I don't want it to delay it. Like I don't want them to be like get gun shy and be like, well. That shit's off the table. I don't care. We're we're pushing it to 2023. You know, like I want to see Jaffe wear a MAGA hat and make fun yeah, of him. That's right. You but know? you want know what? I think that the I think it needs to come out this holiday for them because I think early next year it's going to be a big VR push for the fall for the spring. Yeah. I think yeah, January I to March is going to be their VR 
and all their VR launch stuff is going to be there, and they're going to use God of War. So I don't think if they push God of War to the spring or to their first quarter, I mm-hmm. think that's going to be too much. God of War and VR, I think they want to get God of War out, do that, and then do the VR after the holiday sales of the console so there's a bigger install base, and then now sell the accessory that's only for PS5 with the VR and focus on that. I think that's their plan. Mm-hmm. Um, where I think when God of War released or the Pro, like the holiday was the VR, and then they did, <laughs> you know, the other games in the fall. I think they want to do God of War because of the the supply. God of War now, and then because God of War is cross gen, so that will be a big for them that they'll sell a big software for the holiday, and then do the um, VR in that time in the first half. And I think that's that's kind of what they want to do. That's why I don't think it could get the lead unless they want to do both of that at the same time. I'm pretty certain it's coming this year. I yeah, really, yeah. I do not think at all it's coming out next year. I'm pretty certain it's coming this year. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I've been on this thing. You can check the tapes. Uh-huh. I've been, I'm in 2022, ride or die, yeah. and I think that's you just. A, us all. I just, I I, September. I, I'm a selfish dude. You know, I want to get this game as soon as possible, and I just, I. Th- I don't think it's like a, f- like a lot of people in the chat are like, oh, wait till it's finished. I think this shit's finished, dog. Yeah. I, I I don't know, man. I, because they announced this in 2020, man. <clears throat> so I think What's it's done. Last year. Yeah, yeah, I think this is done. Definitely. So. And I did one other thing, Salty. Before we move on, yeah. I think also too, people are getting nervous because the same thing kind of happened to Horizon where remember yeah. they showed it in June and then they didn't even show God of War in June but when they showed Horizon in June last year and then they didn't have a release date at the end of the trailer and then they moved it to the next year and then yep and everybody's like well where is it coming out and then they came out in September or August and they said it's coming out next year so I think people are like well God of War wasn't shown in June now it's not shown but if it was shown with no release date people are concerned i think the fact that Corey's back on twitter and mm-hmm. doing things i think either he's gonna announce his game with god of war or they're just gonna do god of war with a release date that's all they really need to do like they have they need to do more on forspoken and do god of war but like they have this year-long lock regardless of god of war comes out of year. like from their first party like they released a lot of stuff this year yeah, and they 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 have their big E uh, three style event for September. They've done that the last two years, so uh, they have. That, yeah. I mean, they got plenty of time, right? I mean, we're in July. Uh, more than likely, you know, act like you're an insider and say it's going to be next week. They'll probably come out with something and say what's going to be going down, but because you have July, to- August, September, and you know, was in movie theaters. And there you go. If there was a movie theaters, let's put Ragnarok's coming. And now they yeah, that's a good tight, thing. You know? I didn't even think mm-hmm. about that. Because you had that, that's good. Good crossover. Good. Uh, anybody else have some thoughts before we get out of here? Um, I just, I just wanna. I've been having a bit of back and forth with GK and Co in the chat. Shout out to you, sir. He seems to have this idea that. Microsoft making a shit ton of money through the mobile games division that they've got going on with Candy Crush and all that lot. You mean um, and, and Call of Duty, you know, uh, mobile. Uh, yeah. That that somehow makes Game Pass viable because the profits that the mobile game division makes will cover the cost of game pass uh he's saying this in response to my point that game pass can't be viable if they need to dish out more money than it will ever make permanently like uh, but you need to understand jk and where you're going wrong here is the mobile division would make microsoft even more money if they weren't continuing to cover or use its profits to cover a leech and and so it's not viable. You, you can't. It's extremely naive to expect any business to just happily continue to fuel a a um, a division that is only burning money and not making money. Uh, you cannot expect that to remain. Otherwise, Game Pass is literally doing it's nothing for Microsoft. Enough, it's it's doing nothing, nothing for them. So, it's not the end number, man. 
Yeah, exactly. It's 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 not viable otherwise. So Game Pass has to be profitable for it. Exactly, it has to become viable at some point, not riding on the profits of another division. So don't don't tell me that's not how it works. Like like it's extremely naive to to assume and think that oh, because they're making money elsewhere in something that is viable, then 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 that that perfectly justifies continuing to operate something that isn't viable like that's that's the silliest uh business uh, like anti-business logic i've i've ever heard so yeah chris, I just chris you there my dude uh i think he came back yeah yeah uh, what's your thoughts uh on the whole situation with god of war ragnarok the leaks the lack of announcements all that stuff um honestly i i don't i don't um i mean there's a couple of things man i i don't think people should go should be going crazy as there is definitely not like like come on like people like one dude send a dick pic and shit like that i don't think people should be going overboard like that like that shit is crazy i mean i i get the frustration because they've been telling us no this year this year no it's not delayed not delayed not delayed and we're all wondering, okay, when the fuck are you gonna announce it? When you're gonna like it's like it's already July. We're already in July, right? Um and and we still don't know we still don't know anything. And apparently there was supposed to be a thing today, but um but I guess they delayed it for whatever reason. A lot of people assume it's because of the snitch thing, but to me that I mean, to me when like Sony would like literally delay a whole announcement that they had lined up and planned and marketing and our people already paid and stuff like that just for one guy because he said because he gave a binary code. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the reason for um, that is. But, you know, we, like all the evidence is pointing all the other reports are reporting that there was supposed to be some some trailer with pre-orders and uh, apparently a collector's edition or, mm-hmm. or something like that. So um i i don't know i guess it's people like people have this thing where it's like they want information right away so a lot of people are getting impatient i'm getting impatient myself because i'm like what's taking y'all so fucking long just to give us a fucking release date right or a trailer with a release date like what like was like like we're already in july if it's supposed to be coming out this year like we just had a whole event of like games being shown and shit like that it's like the last game we're waiting on from PlayStation is is God of War. For Spoken has a release date. All these all these other games have a release date and stuff like that. Except like I think Harry Potter is like the only one. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a uh, I, I, I don't know if it's a problem that PlayStation has created, but at the same time, it's like I don't think people should. I mean, we have no other choice to wait because even if we got a release date, right? Even if we got a new trailer and release date, guess what? We're still gonna have to wait. So you know what I mean? So even if they say, even if they come out tomorrow and be like, hey, God of War, uh, November 10th, right? Uh, 2002. It's like, yeah, we get, we finally got the release date, but we still got to wait regardless whether we have the release date or not. We still got to wait for the game. So, um, yeah, but, you know, uh, I, at first I was thinking, it's like, well, you know, it's like, Sony's only doing one show a year and, you know, and, and, and fucking, you know, and people are getting, uh, you know, every, everybody else is dropping information and Sony is always the only one that is like always the last and always, you know, keeps people in the dark and we don't know what's going on. But, but I, I wouldn't even say it's, n- it's nothing like that because we've had, we've gotten a few state of plays already this year, right? We've got like at least four or five state of plays um you know which is more than they were doing before because before it used to it, they only used to do one show a year which was e3 remember e3 was like the only thing and then they had psx but then they completely stopped doing that so we only had so we only had one time to wait every single year at e3 or sometimes at the game awards but i mean they've been getting a lot of state of players so I w- i'm not complaining about their information rollout it's just like you know at some points it's like you know, you see, you see, people want it. Like, uh, just fucking, just, just drop the, just drop a trailer and the release date. You know what I mean? Like, or drop a state of play um, for it or whatever. Maybe that's what they're waiting on. I'm not too sure, but I just, um, yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to cut you off, but I just, yeah, I, I, think, I was on the phone 
phone call, so I don't know. I don't know what y'all really said about this whole situation. No, I, so. you you put out some great points. I mean, I think Sony does need to take some fault with this because I don't know. They're dragging their feet for a reason. We'll never really know, honestly, yeah. because it's like Corey went off Twitter. <laughs> He went completely off Twitter, dude. No, like just MIA. And all of a sudden he comes back and does a video like on God of War, which he's not even working on anymore. I mean, he's not the director on this one. He's doing his own shit. And it's like he's Mm -hmm. the PR guy, the in-between to keep the fan base from, you know, picking up the pitchforks and the torches and all that other shit. Because it's like the fans do have reason to be uh, impatient for a certain extent because of when this was announced and like how they're being drug along, but they don't have the right to obviously go to the extent that a lot of these weirdos are going. It's just people want an answer one way or another, right? It's okay if you aren't ready with this game and you need to delay it, but don't make, don't just keep dragging people along with morsels to keep them, you know what I'm saying? Like, do yeah, one don't way keep or telling us, hey, just keep, you know, everything's you know? on track, nothing's delayed, nothing's delayed, nothing's delayed, but we're already in July, right? Or tomorrow's July, and we're like, okay, so it's like, okay, so when, when is it like, when, when, like, why y'all gotta wait like two months before release? Like, exactly, uh, it's, to, it's to, to drop information. It's the term take a shit or get off the pot, right? I mean, it's it, people don't give a – they want – like I said, everyone wants to play this as soon as possible. If you gave them the option to play it tonight, they would play it tonight, okay? But if you tell them to, in order to get the best game possible, we're delaying in 2023, people will get over that. They they, they want the best game possible. They don't, they just don't want to get drug, drug along. And obviously, like with the leak of how – uh, the snitch has been on. I don't think he was wrong. Like, there's multiple things going into this, and I'm not sure. Like I said, no one's going to really know why they're doing what they're doing because of the mixed messaging and the fact that, like I said, Tom Henderson has specific details into the the collector's edition, what's going to be in there. Yeah. People He's reliable. Have, people mm-hmm. have information on this game. And, and like Bloomberg, which I trust – the reports that they put out there, all this stuff, all the signs are like pointing towards a November release date. The the ratings board rating the game in Korea and mm, yeah. in, in Ta- in Taiwan and all, you know, it's just like all this shit saying 2022. So like stop dragging your feet. Just put a fucking date out there. The fan base will be cool with it. And then you have you have a September event and you have a trailer you can do. Whenever or a special uh, state of play, and that's and, that's and the end of the story. Yeah, and the whole thing with the snitch as well. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Chris. Um, yeah, with the with the snitch, well, we f- we already found out what his method is, right? <laughs> so apparently YouTube. he he gets access to to YouTube unlisted videos, so he's able to. Because if you notice, like it, he, ever since he came on the scene, um, which was right before the state of play, mm-hmm. um, all of the thing that he's gotten right is usually like. A couple of days before, right when they were when they were like when, when they would put the upload of YouTube, uh, uh, the thing as enlisted, Every, nothing is really live streamed like that anymore. Everything is just like pre, uh, you know, like a a preset video and stuff like that. So maybe if they do live streams, maybe they wouldn't get hit with the uh, you know <laughs> uh, so uh, with these leaks. But 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 now in this um um now in this day and age where there, there, are, there are leakers, there are insiders, there are journalists who don't give a shit and will put out reports as they see fit and get inside information and stuff like that. It's like, Sony, don't, 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 don't get upset. You know what I mean? Don't, don't get upset because y'all taking way too long to put out information and people are finding other ways to, put, to, to gather that information and put it out for, uh, for the public to know. You know what I mean? So I just... Uh... Like I said, from an outside perspective, knowing the way Sony operates, like Fort Knox with their shit, uh, I know that they're pissed. Uh, their security teams are, you know, they're pissed. They're trying to find whoever this dude is or woman, um, whoever the snitch is, man. I hope you got, I hope you have a uh, really good uh, VPN, <laughs> VPN or whatever, dude, because I, yeah. 
They're sending all the ninjas, all the whoever the secret right, people Herman that Hulse they have at them. Herman Hulse is on the yacht and talking to like they, people. I, you know? I don't know if he, I don't know if he, if he purposely did this to like throw people off, but if you go on his Twitter profile, his location says Miami. Yeah. Right. So there's, yeah. so that's already narrowing yacht. down to a location. You know he. You know what I mean. Miami. So he's not. Yeah, no, no, that's she is. Yeah. Probably on a boat yeah. somewhere on, on the, on the yeah. ocean. It's probably in Willie's backyard or something with a laptop. But um, it's just I don't know. I I'm okay with a, a leaker that actually gets shit right because I'm tired of like the Roberto Serranos of the world putting bullshit out there. So I hope yeah, I, guess <laughs> shit, yeah. I hope that I hope guy's this... an embarrassment, bro. He's like Andrea Pacini and uh, Astol and, and yeah. Astol, but probably just... not quite as console worry. But he's definitely as uh. Like full of shit. <laughs> man, he he man, he denied my bet, man. He denied my bet. He, he tried. I tried to. He just, I tried to bet him. I tried to bet him, but he, I tried to bet because he said uh, earlier this year he was like, uh, f- uh, seven remake, uh, is gonna get announced for Xbox, Xbox, uh, yeah. in the summer. And I was like, no, it's not. I bet you. And he never took my bet. <laughs> of course, dude. Yeah, and, nah, but I for one, I, I hope the snitch sticks, sticks around for a while. But we'll see if Sony shuts the shit down because it just seems like people found out the method, and then it's just a uh, they're gonna shut that down. Whatever, Did I think they'll just Corey's go private with it. About it, where he's like, I wish I could tell you like what it is. Did you see that one? No, I didn't see that one. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll let me see. If yeah, he said, that. um, I wish I could tell you certain things like. But he can't. Like, he like made it seem like the, behind like, the scenes like, shit. Like why? He made it seem like they're like they they're ready to announce shit. Like the the studio himself, but higher ups as, as Sony um, is not letting them announce was it. Was it right. a uh, reply? Yeah, I don't know if it was a reply. I'm still trying to find it. I don't know if he posted it. Oh yeah, here it is. I'll send it here. I'll send it. Twitter DM uh, if you could. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Because I didn't see that. I saw the dick pic thing. He was replying about that, <laughs> that he didn't shouldn't have to reply to that. And then there's the oh, you saw the dick pic, huh? Yeah, yeah. He, he sent says, me the dick pic. It was weird. He says he had all. Uh, if it were up oh, to me, yeah, I would yeah. share all the information when I know about it. But it's not up to me. So be please be patient. I promise things will be shared at the earliest point possible. Uh, we make games for you, and yeah. So uh, it was up to me. He was sure all the information that he had. I, I think guess. you were. Uh, were you the one that said that Corey's going to announce his game? Um, I thought so. Like, yo, maybe. I think he he'll do that at the September event. Honestly, yeah, they'll like start it with God of War, and then yeah, I yeah. think so. I think yeah. Because there's a reason well, why he's. It's just weird back. that he's not on the project. I mean, obviously he's the still on the not project. Doing any PR. The yeah, where's the, the where's guy. the actual director? Where he where's yep. he at? He introduced him. He say shit. And, Remember he introduced him? He's like, here's the guy yeah. that's gonna be working on here and then he just like Yeah, well he said he said well he's the the Eric guy, he said he doesn't like being on camera social and interviews interaction. and interaction. shit like that. Yeah. So I mean Corey, since everybody knows Corey, whatever, he's he's like the PR guy, even though he's yeah. not working on it, he's still like an he's the he still he still has like a overseer, a you know what I mean? Like a like he, he did write the outlines of the story and everything like that. He right? did raising Kratos um, documentary, he's always right, in the so, public. Yeah, so so and and I and I'm pretty sure he takes that mantle of like if like if if anybody's gonna get shit at the studio, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna be the the face. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like everything comes it. to me. Yeah. yeah. Instead of somebody else, like, hey, you get the heat. And I, yeah. who were? Oh, it was Corey that tweeted that picture of him with the dual sense, and he didn't show what he had. Do you guys remember that? Like he was playing yeah. something. That was God of War Ragnarok, dog. Like he's, I I feel like he's the dude. So Eric Williams is obviously directing this, but it's like. Corey rebooted the whole fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like he he was in charge of like bringing back life to God of War. So it's like I don't think the game goes gold until Corey's like, "All right, this game's ready to go." So he's got to like approve all the shit, you know? So mm-hmm. um that he's like the PR dude and the QA tester, but 
Uh, we're out of time, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. It's been awesome, like usual, man. I miss – it's weird. Like when I miss a week, it's just like it feels like a month almost because I don't get to talk yeah. gaming with the homies and stuff. But it was awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for all the likes, super chats. Um, again, thanks. Shout out to Brian. Like I said, I, I shared that before, but Icon Era is, the, is awesome. It's you know getting off the ground and stuff like that. So if you guys could support that, it'd be awesome. Again, I'll what is link. that? I got yeah. an invite to that, but I don't know it's what a, it is. It's 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 a gaming forum. So basically, if you're not familiar with Reset Terror or any of that, it's a place where if you sign up, you can put posts. So like right here, um, I'll show you guys on the screen. It'll be delayed a little bit, but. Um, it's a place where you can have gaming conversations. So people are going to post things like threads, right? Um, Sony's new marketing strategy right here. Okay. So then someone posts their thoughts on something and has a title and you're, you, you get approved, right? So you have a profile there and then people reply, right? There's this person replying and it just, there's threads, right? Here's Brian here. And it's just a place to, to have gaming news, gaming conversations, stuff like that. Uh, it's free, so that's what it is. There's different. It's not just gaming as well. There's technology and stuff like that. But there's been some issues with like Reset Terra and the other ones. So this is made by gamers for gamers. So check it out. Uh, I'll put the link there for you guys or whatever. Um, shout out to the guests again. Um, Rome, I think had some things going on. Rome, you there, dude? Yeah, I'm here, bro. Yeah, I'm 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 hanging in there. I've been following you guys. I've just been. Uh... Yeah, it's been a rough one. I heard, I heard you. I heard you, dude. Thanks for uh, trying at least. Uh, thanks for hanging out. And Nate, again, it was good to have you here. Where can people find you, dude? You might not be there. Um, Caraba. Nate, Nate left. Nate left to get coffee, so he's not going to okay. be able to make it. Okay, uh, Caraba, if, you, if you, you could tell him where to find Nate and yourself. Yeah, you can find Nate on Twitter at the real Nate. Mm-hmm. Also, you can find us, me and Nate, at Game Player every Friday, 5 p.m. It Saturday, 5 p.m. It's standard. And you can find me at Anime Squad every Friday, 5 p.m. It's standard time. Thank you for having me, Kofi. Uh, yeah, Kofi, where you at, man? We miss you, dude. Um, yeah, this, he is missed. Yeah, he's trying to get a house, man. So shout out to him. Uh, Wooly, where uh, where can people find you, man? Man, you got the crowd riled up tonight, man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Uh, you can find me at Wooly underscore gamer. Uh, I also just want to say Innate uh, brought some fire points oh, yeah. uh, tonight. Uh, absolute fire. It's been great hearing him speak, and he articulates himself extremely well, similar to Kofi, to be honest. Um that's definitely a big compliment because you know how highly I rate Kofi. So, um, yeah, great, great show tonight. Um, I'm s- sad that Rome uh, was uh, had a, had things to deal with, uh, right. but would be awesome to hear him um, spit his stuff next time. Uh, definitely love to get him on again. Um, as always, Chris and Jez just killing it. As always, in Caraba, awesome hearing his voice again. Um, thanks for having me on Salty. I'm absolutely pooped. So yep. I'm going to shoot now, but just remember guys, don't be a donut. Use your noggin and, uh, don't ever go full export. Always curb your export because it's getting pretty freaking embarrassing. Some of the shit that's kind of, um, coming back to bite so many of these Xbox apologists in the ass when they, Cat through the roof like Froskirin, only for it to land and fall flat on its head. So, and and just don't get too bogged down with God of War. I mean, November is still five months away or four months away. Um, so I mean, there's still time. Still time. Anyway, awesome, dude. Stay awesome. Um, Chris. Uh yeah, man. Shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to. Uh... <clears throat> All the guests, everybody in the in the chat. Um, y'all be getting butt hurt over people's feeling opinions, man. Y'all be yeah, <laughs> it'll like y'all gotta like me. Y'all gotta be like me. Like I, okay, like okay, you don't like it, cool. I don't, I don't care. I like it. Yep. You know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> you don't like it, I love it. I don't care, right? But um, uh, yeah, Twitter. 
uh, find me on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I still do spaces. I did a really, really. It's it's not it's pre recorded, uh, so people can can check it out. But really, really good space the other day. It was about level design, right, and the importance of level design and in video games and why gamers overlook it. Nobody pays attention to it. And we actually had a, a level designer from Ubisoft, or used to work at Ubisoft. He worked on like Watch Dogs, Legions, and stuff like that. Um, he came through and uh, uh, blessed us with a lot of insight and knowledge and stuff like that. People want to check that out. You can hit me up on Twitter, and I'll send you the the link for it. But um, yeah, man. Other than other than that, man, there's uh, shit, man, there's a lot of a lot of things happening this month um, that's coming out that I'm looking forward to. Uh, uh, live a live and, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and whatnot, and you know, uh, let's see if uh, hopefully next week we get something on God of War. Honestly, I think, I think, I think because of all this shit that's going on, I actually think they're gonna expedite the the, the, the fucking release date and trailer and shit like that now, yeah. you know. But, they'll, they'll just we'll drop see. it randomly, knowing them, yeah, they'll probably drop it tomorrow or some shit, it probably got delayed till tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, go check out Chris's spaces as well. Uh, Jez, last but not least, man. Hey, thank you guys. Pleasure to speak with everybody. Yeah, awesome show. Awesome topics, man. Uh, it was good. Yeah, I missed it last week. Uh, I missed talking to everybody. And uh, yeah, have a happy 4th of July, everybody, in the yes, U.S. Sir. And uh, yo, I thank everybody. Thank you. Hit that like button on your way out, and you can follow me and go to my channel at uh, Jez7780. GMG over there, the gaming grind house. Uh, I'll see, um, you know, I'll see what tomorrow, like maybe I'll do a show tomorrow. I had the thumbnail all set up, but today was busy, but, uh, yeah, check out the show. It's been awesome. The support's been great. And, uh, yeah, become a member of the grind house. Go hit that right. subscribe button. No I, have all, I have all the information in the description for everybody here. Go check them out. Social media, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff. Um, have a good weekend, guys. Uh, all that. Hit us up in the comment section with any of the retort you want to do on any of the topics that we had. If you're listening on Spotify, I forgot about that in the beginning. Hit a, hit us with that five-star review. We'll catch you guys on the next one. And as 